Welcome everyone to the uh, August 12th, 2019 Town of Scarborough Planning Board meeting. If you could all join me, please, in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you. My mic is working. Doreen, could you give us the roll, please? Nicholas McGee. Here. Rachel Hendrickson. Here. Roger Bealey. Here. Robin Saunders. Here. Richard Duperry. Here. Jennifer Ladd. Here. Rick Meinking. Here. Thank you. We have the uh, minutes for July 1st and July 22nd. Um, I'll entertain a motion to approve those two. So moved. I have a second on those? Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor? So that's be unanimous, thank you. First item up tonight is ENF LLC requests a site plan amendment for 371 US Route 1, Assessor's Map U39, Lot 46A. Jamel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so the applicant's here this evening uh, with a minor modification uh, to the parking area and the stormwater treatment system. Uh, staff, has, staff has suggested several minor modifications <laughs> to the plans, and these have been incorporated into a draft motion uh, for the board's consideration this evening. I'll turn it back to you. Thank you very much, Jamel. The applicant is here and ready. Would they like to approach? Just giving us an overview of what you got going on. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I'm Will Conway with Sebago Technics, representing ENF Lim Limited Liability, doing this business as Land Rover Jaguar. Uh, if I could turn your attention to the screen behind the chair. Uh, this area is uh, to the right of the building. It's sort of shaded gray in that area. What you're looking at is a demolition plan, and that represents a uh, pavement uh, that's been removed. And the original design had uh, some parking that was parallel to Route 1 and extended from the right edge towards the building. At the time the site plan was drawn, the uh, thought was that the service bay, which is the, the uh, area right there, would be approached from the rear. But since uh, that plan was drawn, the applicant has determined, um, as required by Land Rover <coughs> International, that it has to approach from the front. So that parking area that had been planned would encroach on vehicles that stack in front of the service doors, which is shown on the diagram uh, to uh, my left. So uh, what we're planning on doing is moving the parking to the right-hand edge uh, and allowing uh, cars to stack and then cars to circulate around to the right of the stack vehicles. Um, as Jamel Lynch um, mentioned, um, it does, that area does impact a small existing uh, stormwater pond, which will be uh, reconfigured to accommodate uh, the project. And with that, I'll answer any questions that I may not have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, Robin, do you want to take a crack at this? Um, I'm just wondering, is this um, for public comment? It is. You're correct. Uh, if there is anyone here that is for public comment, just Please approach and ask your questions direct to the chair. We'll do our best to answer them. Seeing none, I'm going to close public comment. Go ahead, Robin. Um, uh, yeah, can you, can you explain the, um, the impact to the stormwater um, feature and um, how it will be mitigated? Yeah, so um, it <clears throat> Slightly, in, not the bottom of the pond, but the side slope encroached mm -hmm. into the new edge of pavement. Mm -hmm. So we're basically going to widen the outside edge to the right. Um, but technically speaking, can you talk about the volume and the detention times and things like that? Will that be I'm not an engineer, as you know. Um, what I can tell you is the project um, is a slight increase in impervious area. We submitted calculations okay. to that effect in the uh, proof that the pond has capacity. And 
The peer review engineer has signed off on that. No, no. As Jamel commented in his opening remarks, we need to add some dimensions to the plan, but we'll we'll do that as a condition. Um, do you have any um, Do you have any objection to the staff comments? No. I'm, I'm fine, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Rachel. Yeah, I I need to a little bit of help. On the uh, on the plan, so the vehicles will stack in for the garage door in front. They'll Correct. enter from in front. Will they exit the same way? Or they no, go they'll up? exit the rear. So when they exit the rear, are they going to go around to the left of the building or circle around to the right and pass the stacked cars? They could do either. Do you think there's one way that's better? Oh, I think that uh, clockwise is a more natural. Uh, tendency of drivers so that certainly functions well all right then I would suggest that um, there be some sort of signage directing people out otherwise you're going to find them splitting and some going left and some going sure. right so yep. some sort of directional once uh, folks yeah, come out sure. that would be helpful uh, the other thing I have a question on the electric charging stations what are going to be the hours of operation uh, standard you know, nine to five. So they're going to be turned off when the when the facility is closed, or I don't think we've thought that through. My guess would that probably the charging stations would not be on timers. That they would be. You could leave a car charging overnight there if you want. Then what's the level of charging station that's going in? Because some of the charging, the new charging stations can completely charge a car in um, 50 minutes. So to leave them overnight with the trickle going in kind of uh, vitiates the uh, Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I think it's benefit. up to Land Rover to manage that. Well, it, it would be helpful if we knew how that was going to be managed. <clears throat> OK. Uh, just in case the police come along and see cars there at 12 o'clock at night and wonder why all of a sudden there are the cars there, Okay. The cars stacked up. Yep, we'll put a note on the plan. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Rick. Hi. Hi. Are you charging the grading? Are you changing the grading at all with the changes? That Slightly, you're to, Slightly to uh, modify that uh, pond. OK. Just wanted to. That. Not a lot. It's very minor grading. Yeah, it's just, I, yeah, I looked at the plan, but um, so everything's, as long as you change this, everything still slopes towards the pond, you're all good. Yes. That's all I got. Something Thanks, Rick. Roger. <clears throat> um, I have no questions other than just a comment. I want to just uh, comment about how attractive I think the new building looks, so that's all. It looks nice, right? Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Jen? Um, I'm curious about, um, so you referenced vehicles stacking in front of that service entrance. Do you have a sense of how many that may be, or, or is this like where someone would come to drop off their car for work and maybe they're running in to check in with the office, that sort of thing, or is, I'm just curious about the operations of that service entrance. I'm not 100% sure about that. I haven't asked that question to Land Rover. Um, I, I would imagine that um, most people will queue. It, if there's no vehicles in, they might just pull right in. But if there's vehicles that are approaching, they just pull in behind, get out, go talk to the attendant. They might get their keys at that point. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, I was just curious about whether or not that would in any way, um, if the stacking was long enough, put people on top of the crosswalk, which would not be ideal. Um, but 
just a just a question, I guess, back to um, back to the applicant about whether or not they have a, have thought about that or have a plan for sort of sh either shooing cars along or identifying an area not to park within, um, mm -hmm. just to leave that open. Okay. Other than that, I'm all set. Yeah. Rick. Yeah, I'll echo that. I think it looks great the building since the renovation. Um, and I also commend you for the EV charging stations. I, I would agree that it would be nice to put the level, one, two, or three, of the type of, of charger it is. And it would be helpful, too, at least, if you, if you found out if they were networked or non-networked. Uh, because if they're networked, they could be used by anybody at any time. Uh, although you have, as the owner, have the right to uh, shut them off. If you're paying for the electricity, so doing that, and then finally, did you just double check the photo uh, metrics with the movement of that uh, parking lot light to ensure that we still have the coverage you need? Yeah. Yeah. Everything's good. Yeah. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. I don't really have any further questions for you. So, with that said, um, I do have a motion prepared. I'll read it out now. A move to approve the site plan amendment project titled Amended Site Plan Proposed by ENFK, I'm sorry, ENF LLC, as depicted on the plan set prepared by Sebago Technics, dated 72419, with the following findings and conditions. Findings The applicant is proposing to reconfigure the existing parking area on the site and modify the stormwater treatment system. The property is located within the general business B3 zoning district and a contract zone. The property is identified on the town of Scarborough tax maps as map U39, lot 46A. The planning board has reviewed the application and supporting documentation and finds that the proposed design on the site plan adequately addresses the site plan review, shoreland zoning, and zoning ordinance requirements for site utilization, layout, access, internal vehicular movement, pedestrian ways, landscaping, stormwater management, architecture, signage, utilities, and storage. Conditions. One, prior to the start of construction, the applicant shall revise the plan set to include A, the parking space and aisle dimensions and signage as discussed with the planning board. B, the limited disturbance buffer. C, additional details of the electrical vehicle charging stations along with utilities serving them. D, matching overall site plan and site, pl site plan and site plan. Yeah, so it's the overall, which is this one. And okay. then they have a zoomed in one that didn't really correlate. Okay, thank you. It's a little funky. <laughs> this shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Two, prior to the start of construction, the applicant shall address the review comments in the memo provided by Wooden and Kern, dated 8-8-19. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Three, the applicant will need to apply for an electrical permit through the codes department before installing the electrical vehicle charging stations on the site. That's the motion. I have a second. Any discussion? All in favor? So that's be unanimous. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is Michael Scammon requests a master plan review for 39 Ingersoll Drive, Assessor's Map R50, Lot 24. Jamel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so this project's located in the Highest Parkway and Rural Farming Zoning Districts. Uh, the project shares the same driveway as the existing salt pump climbing gym. So as the board may recall, the applicant was last in front of you all in June uh, for a site inventory and analysis. And this evening, uh, the applicant's proposing to develop phase one of the 43-acre property. So phase one includes a 7,500-square-foot commercial building, including a restaurant. So the conceptual master plan uh, phase is intended uh, to generally lay out how the planned development will be developed, including the, various, uh, the proposed use of various parts of the site, the primary road network and pedestrian network, the overall approach to stormwater management, proposed development areas, open space areas, and buffer areas, and the development standards that will apply to the overall uh, development. The standards do allow for five acre portions of the property to go through a separate uh, master, review, master plan review process. That's what's before you this evening. Um, so given that the zoning standards require the project to be bicycle and pedestrian oriented, uh, staff has suggested a sidewalk be provided along the entire access road and the applicant revised the one-way portion of the roundabout, so it is uh, designed to minimize vehicular speeds on the property. Staff was also unable to locate the required buffers on the plans and any associated details for these buffers. 
And staff would also like to point out that the project is located in the Mill Brook watershed, which has been listed by the main DEP as a threatened stream. So staff encourages the applicant to design the project to help prevent additional impacts within the watershed. And one other thing, it was unclear to staff if the restaurant is the only proposed use in the 7,500 foot building, square foot building, so the applicant should be sure to discuss any additional uses uh, proposed for the building with the board. Staff is comfortable with these issues being dealt with as part of a formal site plan submission and has provided the board with a motion uh, for your consideration this evening. Thanks. Thank you, Jamel. The applicant, uh, please approach. And again, we ask that uh, you assume we've read most of the materials, so uh, helping focus on staff comments would be greatly appreciated. And then, okay. of course, uh, the board, especially at a conceptual point, will have our own set of questions for you as we go along. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm Mr. Chairman, I'm Bob Metcalf with Mitchell & Associates, and with me tonight is Mike Scammon, the applicant, his daughter Melanie, uh, George Workman from our office, and Matt Provencial from Mark Mueller Architects, who will be talking about the architecture we've got on this project for you. So, since the last time we were here, uh, we made some additional changes on the master plan, had discussions with Jamel, and uh, going over some of the submission items for the, uh, the detail on the, uh, uh, the application for the master planning. And we've subsequently revised that and some of that information is obviously addressed in uh, Jamel's e uh, memo. Uh, do you want me to go through a complete context location on this or do you want to focus more on the details that came up through the review? Because I can do a formal. I think uh, focusing on the review aspect of this and then the board will chime in on it. Sure. Okay. So, so in terms of the master plan itself and going over some of Jamel's comments in here, uh, the main elements we have, again, it's pedestrian oriented. The, uh, the roadway we had shown as a more of a naturalized shoulder of a, a uh, stone dust pathway along there, but we can look at that in terms of improving it to a sidewalk. We were trying to minimize the overall influence of hard surfaces as far as pavement was concerned, uh, and also to accommodate for some of the, uh, the water quality management we were looking at for the site itself. Uh, the core of the master plan itself is, as you've seen during the site analysis phase, as well as um, when we met with the board for an initial review of the plan itself in terms of what the intent is for a wellness-based community. Uh, phase one is for the, the wellness building with the, the restaurant. And part of our documentation we had submitted initially was that it would be a mixed use. The restaurant's only gonna be one portion of this. The rest of the space would be wellness-related medical type uses or therapy type uses. So there is an office component in it. The actual tenants haven't been defined at this point. Uh, Mr. Scammon and his daughter are working on those elements. Uh, so it will be a mixed use. It's not entirely a restaurant-based use for the phase one. Uh, in terms of the uh, one-way circulation, as Jamal said, we had looked at a addressing that. The front is really intended to be a drop-off area. Uh, so the circulation around that loop, we're looking at pavement type improvements that will slow traffic going down through there. And the division island we had in there, we've divided that off so that we get the two-way circulation to the left and into the parking. And part of that two-way circulation is ultimately will connect to the future phases of development so that we're able to separate that travel corridor. Uh, in terms of the zoning for the neighborhood impact, the intent uh, all along has been the nature of the topography on this site because of the gravel extraction operation. The site up here, it drops, I guess it doesn't go to that other screen, does it? Uh, the site drops down from this boundary line, which is along the residential properties, and steps down towards the pond itself. It's almost in a terrace situation right now. So the intent is to preserve the vegetation on the top of that slope where there actually is a trail network that kind of partially goes to that area in maintaining that. And then taking advantage of the topography and being able to step that down so from the residential use up in here, the buildings, whatever goes into this phase, we're able to step down towards the pond to provide that separation and buffering of the, uh, of the neighborhood along that edge. And that would have complied pretty much along this entire edge in here. Uh, along this edge in here, it's fairly open. Of course, it's the gateway 
uh, apartment complex, which actually we didn't realize until we saw the last building going up here that they have great views of the pond. Uh, uh, we first started looking at this site, we didn't see that structure. So there'll be some sustained buffers that'll occur along that edge when this phase actually comes into play. Uh, the same thing in this area in here, there's a substantial amount of vegetation that's around the ponds. Uh, since the termination of the gravel extraction operation in uh, I believe it was the late 70s, uh, Mike and then his, his late father had been going through a whole reclamation of this gravel pit. And when it was started in the 60s, there was no DEP requirements in terms of mitigation. Uh, and reclamation for gravel pits. So on their own, they've developed their own plan and they've been doing that uh, since that time in terms of management, planting vegetation to restore the area. So where there's vegetation that's occurred along the edge of the ponds, uh, it's an asset to the future development of this and the intent is to sustain that integrity as much as we can as we move towards those other phases. Uh, we've shown the area which is in the rural farm, which is, as we had shown back there in the site analysis, it has a potential to have three additional lots up in here. There are no plans right now or, you know, conceived of at this point for any type of development up on that side as part of what we're looking at in the master plan, but we've shown it since it's all part of the same parcel. Uh, Talked about the, the building itself and the restaurant. Uh, the Millbrook application, the watershed, also the fact that this is also within the town's aquifer protection area, which pretty much goes around the perimeter of the pond here, comes around the sides of uh, where the proposed building is. The whole design intent is to utilize bioretention uh, in the core of the parking area. And I'll go through some of that again after I have Matt go over some of the architecture. But looking at uh, water quality treatment on site, uh, with potential use of the pond to this side of the site uh, with potential to deal with water quantity after treatment. Uh, so those are the things we're in the initial stages of looking at. We've submitted for pre-application with DEP for the stormwater permit. Uh, so until we actually have further discussions with DEP and try and finalize that, uh, we'll be developing the plan and we'll also be having the town's engineer as part of that discussion with DEP. So that's our plan. Uh, the intent is, again, it's a wellness-based. We're trying to be as insensitive to the, to the environment as possible. Uh, let's see. Regarding the conceptual site plan, the traffic analysis, actually our traffic engineer is floating in here somewhere for another application, Randy Dutton. He's already on board to start looking at the traffic assessment for this proposed use, uh, and we'll be providing that when we submit the, the site plan application for the project. Uh, the Pedestrian walking path, I discussed that in terms of partially for the roadway coming in, we'll look at the sidewalk area. There are some existing trails that are through the site. Some of it just follows along what was the old tote roads that went around the gravel extraction that we'll be preserving. Uh, some of that is really shown on this plan as future. It is not intended that it's all gonna be done during phase one where we've shown some pedestrian connections going around in various locations of the site. We'll be just doing some of the immediate improvements as well as incorporating into some of the existing trail network that is there at this time. Uh, regarding the salt pump climbing gym and the access, actually the, act, the salt pump gym is shown on the, the site for the master plan. Uh, it's labeled by the owner rather than the salt pump gym. Uh, we can obviously change that and put a note on there reflecting that it's a salt pump gym, pump gym. They actually have an access easement over where the main roadway is going to come in to serve the phase one development so that their property actually ends here and that driveway is actually on the totem pond site and they come in over that and access the gym site. So that whole driveway network will be reevaluated in terms of how that configuration works for the, uh, the flow of traffic coming in and out. And uh, the question about the parking, I'm sure we will have that discussion regarding some of the parking issues that uh, salt pump seems to be having, so. Uh, again, with the proposed commercial use, we'll come back with some more additional information on that once some of the additional program is worked on. But again, as we said, it's not intended to be totally the restaurant. As we had indicated in the previous discussions that part of the restaurant, there'll be an outdoor vent area, tent area that'll be at the rear of the uh, proposed building. It'll be out in this location in here. And I'll get a little more detail, as I said, after 
Mark gives a kind of a brief overview of the, uh, of the architecture itself. Uh, regarding the parking, uh, we did look at the standards, but we'll review that again. Uh, and maybe part of the confusion is in terms of the amount of parking based on the assumption that it was all for restaurant use. So we'll get that clarified when we do the actual submission. Uh, based on our assumptions of the potential use, the square footage of the restaurant and the potential offices, the number of parking spaces we've shown is what we had calculated based on the zoning. So we'll refer, revise that and revisit it for the site plan application itself. Uh, widths of the proposed roadways, actually, I, we've already started developing the site plan application for this. The dimensions for the parking and the travelways and everything actually is, is on a plan, but it was evidently turned off on the plan that was submitted to you, so it's there on a the layer. The roadways are the 24-foot travelway, the same thing for the travel aisles for the parking and the depth of the parking spaces and the required dimensions uh, for the parking as well as the ADA spaces. So those are all reflected and they'll be added onto the the plan that we have. Uh, preliminary infrastructure, uh, again, with the stormwater management. Uh, as I said, we're going to be meeting with DEP and dealing with that. Uh, all the utilities will be coming in off of Higus Parkway, and there's an existing low access road that comes in between these two ponds. We'll be building this area up uh, to get the, the gradient to work and then uh, working on your sewer for gravity feed coming off. Uh, on the plan that we've shown to you, it also shows dead ending some of the utilities for future development phases. And that was part of our discussions we had had with Jamel and Jay uh, several weeks ago. So we've shown a lot of that information on the site as it ties into future development. And we can add notes onto the plan per Jamel's comments uh, to clarify what, where those extensions are winding, potentially going to go. Uh, development design standards, I'll have Matt talk a little bit about the architectural elevations that we've done uh, and, and then I can come back to the site and go over some other details. Uh, regarding meeting with the fire department, that's on our laundry list of things to do with the sewer department. So those are all criteria we know we have to deal with uh, as far as the site plan submission. So with that I can turn it over to Matt and Matt can give you a little overview of the architecture itself and then I'll circle back with the more detailed site plan. Good evening, board, Mr. Chair. Uh, Matt Provencal from Mark Mueller Architects. Um, just briefly here, like Bob mentioned, we have a cafe at the first floor and we have some office space for a wellness type user. Uh, the second floor has more of that similar space, the wellness type facility. Um, another main feature to this whole project is this this outdoor patio area here, um, we have it, it's, it's quite large, um, but there's, there's a lot of sight to take in. There's a lot of natural landscape that we wanna take advantage of. Um, and it's, there's kind of this viewing platform here. We have these you know, gradual ramps that come down, some stairs, we have these features, uh, these you know, stone walls, uh, and then we kind of gradually come down into this outdoor event area and gardens and that'll tie into the walking trails, um, et cetera. Um, one thing we tried to do here is, is keep the scale down a little bit. Um, it's only a two story building. Um, we have this covered entry element in this vertical kind of tower, which really accentuates and brings everyone kind of to the center here in this nucleus of the whole, you know, phase development here. Um, a lot of natural materials, earth tones, um, this is kind of what we're trying to do, you know, this, you know, all this site and taking it in. Uh, a lot of glazing, we've paid particular attention. There isn't really a true front to this building, really all sides of the front. There's, you can see it from multiple angles, multiple views. There's plenty to look at. There's a lot of landscape out there. It's gonna be, uh, you know, quite the, quite the space out there. Um, we've taken, we've done a little covered pergola with some covered lattice here to, you know, disguise a little bit of the delivery area. Um, it, it works as far as flow of the traffic and parking. Um, not, like I said, not really a, a back of house area here. So we put it, we put it 
in an efficient place near the front, covered it with a pergola, natural materials. Uh, we'd like to try to harvest some trees from the site uh, to utilize that in a scenario like this. Um, again, you see here from some of the rendering some warm tones um, to tie into the natural landscape. Uh, you see a little bit of topography kind of down here and how it falls away and uh, almost like the, you know, this element kind of coming up, you know, out of the ponds. Um, some of the comments will we'll take care and we'll be very specific when we respond, you know, to the formal site plan as far as the design standards and um, maybe a little bit more with the materials, but that's, that's kind of the schematic design here as far as the, you know, phase one building goes. Thank you. And again, with the uh, phase one site plan, this is more of the detailed plan. Uh, actually, as I indicated, we've already started putting the, uh, the site plan application together so that the stormwater, we were talking about that, the way the grades are working around is to be able to pick up and capture water with some bio retention areas along the perimeter. And this whole core in here would be uh, bio retention treatment areas. Uh, we, as I said, we're going to be uh, meeting with DEP to have some additional conversations over this. Uh, the other thing is the nature of the soils out there, pretty free draining in a lot of the areas. While there are some areas where we do have exposed ledge and the ledge is shallow, so we'll be looking at that and doing some additional testing uh, in terms of depth just to be uh, sure. And that's part of DEP stormwater requirements anyway. So uh, in terms of the patio area Matt was starting to talk about, that's in this location in here. Uh, what we're looking at is incorporating the edge of the main pond there was a small area up in here that's a shallow that ties into this pond that was part of the excavation. Uh, part of that has already been part of the uh, reclamation. There's been some uh, restoration or filling of that area. We're looking at capturing that to create part of the event area as well as what's being referred to as the mother's garden. Uh, the idea is if any of you are familiar with, you know, gardens like up in uh, Mount Desert Island, the Azalea Gardens, kind of a theme similar to that to be able to incorporate the natural and planting and incorporate that within the water features itself. Uh, and then we carry on a water feature coming along this outer edge in here. The pond on the westerly side, uh, actually the elevation of that pond is higher than the other ponds. And to accommodate for any, as a spillway, we're putting in a, an outlet control structure in here so that in the event this gets up to a certain elevation where it would cross over the roadways, it would be able to outlet in that and then come down and into these other ponds. So we're taking all that into consideration. Uh, again, the parking itself, you know, the travel aisles, the parking spaces have all been designed to accommodate that. The circulation's been looked at in terms of being able to get vehicular movement for emergency vehicles, delivery trucks, uh, access for the parking uh, where we talked about trying to create that slower one-way loop in here. We're talking about pavement treatments in here that are really uh, intended to slow traffic down through that location. And this is the point where I talked about we change this divider island in here to really control it as two-way circulation will come around and ultimately, you know, a future phase will come off of that route and then there's another phase that would come around this side as well. So we thought, th thought that through in terms of being able to uh, look at the future improvements. And the same thing with all the utilities. We brought all the utility lines in to serve this building, stubbed it on this end to be able to get a phase two, phase three section on this side of the westerly side of the pond, as well as being able to ultimately extend it back out and get to this side of the pond. So all those features would be part of the site plan approval. Uh, makes sense to install all that infrastructure at this point to be able to go into the future phases without having to disrupt any of the improvements. So I think that kind of gives you an overview of where we are on this. Uh, this is kind of a rendering we put together just to give you kind of an idea of what the green space is we're looking around the site itself. Uh, this is that event area. This would be an area for a tent, uh, preserving as much as the existing vegetation around this little indentation around the pond, the same thing along this edge in here, in this edge of the pond, and then supplementing it. There's some existing vegetation in there that's uh, not really native and some of it's uh, near its end of its expectancy because of the type of trees that are out of those things would be removed and then supplemental plantings would be done. And we'll be showing that information when we actually do the site, full site plan uh, application. So 
And that was a, an image we had shown to you way back uh, when we started doing some of the visual studies for the property. Uh, this would be coming in with Highgate Parkway to your back way back, coming in to show uh, roughly the imagery in terms of the building placement. The large evergreens in here that we're showing, it's the service area that Matt was referring to would be behind this in here, so that we'd be looking at being able to screen that on the approach coming in. And then just some potential, the tent, potential, uh, the tent location and potential awnings coming off the building. And then this was the aerial perspective we had shown way back, uh, just to kind of give you an idea in terms of the context of the site. The pump house gym is over in here. The bridge is not happening, where the area will be filled. Uh, this is where the mother garden and the tent area would be. And then this area in here at the other end of this pond uh, area would be utilized for auxiliary parking associated with the events. Uh, and that would be shown as part of the, uh, the site plan uh, submission. So that's an overview of the master plan. I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, we do have an opportunity for public comment. If there's anyone here that'd like to speak on this topic, please approach the podium. Uh, hello, my name's Ben Devine um, with Devine Capital. Um, we're here for items seven and eight, but we are abutters to this. Uh, we are uh, the beacon at Gateway, 288 luxury apartments. And uh, it's the first I've really seen of this. I think it's terrific. and. Uh, we think it'd be a great amenity to what we're doing. And uh, we're very familiar with Bob Metcalf and, uh, and Mike and Mitchell and Associates and uh, uh, we'd be in full support of this. So um, we wish you well. Thanks. Thank you. Is there anyone else here would like to speak on this? All right, seeing none, I'm gonna close public comment. Uh, Roger. <clears throat> Um, first, I, I, I think this looks really exciting. Um, I remember the fishing hole. And um, a few questions. Um, Ingersoll, Ingersoll Drive, is that currently used? It is? Because I recall going from where your father's house and see, wasn't it according to the, uh, the top trail there going down? Okay. Um, and if I recall, there's a lot of um, wooded areas, you know, upland right there. And where this is going to be located is quite a bit lower than the rest of the surrounding site. Okay. Um, so on Ingersoll Drive again, where you have these um, pedestrian pathways like? is The is access it? coming in from the main road? No, I'm talking yep. about this future. This, yeah. This one over here. <laughs> yes. All right. Is, is that, are you planning to future, in the future, is that going to be planned for uh, pavement or is that just going to be regular, like gravel or something like that? Do you know? Well, I think the intent really is more for the pedestrian type activity. Keep it as natural as possible. It could be gravel. It could be wood chip. Uh, treatment. It depends on the extent of the type of use that is intended based on the additional programming that happens on that. Okay. You try so to stay away from pavement as much as you can. On so the main, the main entrance is going to be off the parkway? Yes. And not necessarily off, uh, uh, okay. Um, the, um, I also noticed in your, in your presentation you have retaining walls around the ponds, which I think is a good idea because I recall Many springs, those ponds would flood, yep. and the and the entranceway, the access road. You, I assume you're going to have to build that up a little bit too, right? Because that yeah. sometimes got impassable. Like um, point the right way, I can show you. Keep going. Yeah. So basically, what we're looking at is the access road coming in here. If you look on this edge here. We're looking at uh, stabilizing the edge with boulders to try and make it as natural as possible. And we're bringing that up about five plus or minus feet in terms of grade. So it'll be stabilized on both sides uh, coming in on either, on either one of the ponds. Uh, then around this outside terrace area, we'll be looking at stepping it 
uh, and probably introducing uh, where we can uh, a larger gravity block type wall and then putting plantings in to disguise that wall and using more natural stone material above. So it'll be basically stepping up from the water. Yeah. So the whole intent is even the building pad itself, we're coming up, uh, I believe it's three feet is what we're coming up from existing grade around the pond, just so that we're able to be out of any potential flooding uh, based on the fluctuation of the ponds. Actually on the site analysis plan, we had shown the seasonal variation of the water levels so that uh, we know exactly pretty good handle on what the, the changes are seasonally. Now, now staff is recommending a sidewalk right along the access road, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, it'd be a sidewalk guy, but. <laughs> um, I, okay, I'll leave, I'll leave that alone right now. Um, the, um, on the buffering, if I can ask staff also on the buffering, were you referring, was staff referring to this, the section up here or over, over in this area here? I think we were looking at the phase one plan actually, a okay. more detailed one, and I guess I'd ask the applicant where they plan on putting the buffers. I'm not sure where they, okay. where they want to put them. Are you looking for buffering around the phase one? Is that what you're talking about? Okay. Back to the planting plan. So basically, you know, we talk about preserving as much of the existing vegetation along this edge of the pond. The residential uses are way up above here. And this whole section over here is fairly wooded on this side of the pond. So we'll be doing supplemental plantings in along here where needed. Uh, as you start getting in doing any type of site work, you discover that the trees where you think they are not necessarily there. And as we said, some of the conditions of the trees have kind of passed their life expectancy. Some of them are some of the gray birch and some of the white birch, and there's some poplar in there. So once that material comes out, we'll be looking at integrating, you know, the more uh, native material that will be able to sustain that buffer and enhance on that edge. Isn't that the sloped? That sloped quite a bit there, isn't it? Oh, this side over in here? Yeah. So in order to put this parking area in here, we'll be dropping the grade. As we're filling this side, we'll be dropping this portion of the, uh, the parking in order to balance the site as well as being able to utilize material as part of the, uh, the roadway improvements. Okay. The, uh, my last comment is I, I, I like the architecture of the building. I think it looks great. So I'm all set, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Roger. Jen? Um, okay. I have a few questions, too. Actually, one that Roger sort of touched on, um, appreciate the gentleman speaking up from the adjacent development. I think that's, um, I think it's great. I think the, the, I think the potential of this site to connect to something like that and to have both be in support is really tremendous um, for both the people that will be living um, at that complex and the, and the businesses located here and for the town in general. Um, I also had a question about the pedestrian network on site and the material that you're choosing, um, but it sounds like you answered that. Um, only other, only other questions, sort of out of curiosity. I'm wondering if there are other, if there are similar developments like this elsewhere that you're um, looking to. It seems very yeah. unique to me, so I, well, I'm... This is Mike's vision, and I think maybe your father had part of that vision as well, of how to repurpose this site and really basing it on a wellness component. And uh, so that's yeah. the driving force is his inspiration on this. So. And then Matt's done a good job trying to figure out how to make the building do that exactly, <laughs> create that image. It's so. certainly a unique, um, a unique site for that. Is there any... Um, plan or vision for any type of active water use, like like a kayak or canoe launch or something like that, or or is your, are you sort of not thinking of that? Well, let's put it this way. There's been a lot of design, you know, concepts as we've developed through this, but in terms of whether or not that's gonna be something that's gonna function as part of this, we still need to work through some of those details, so that hasn't been totally resolved at this sure. point. So. That's all. Thank you, Jen. Uh, Rick. Uh, 
Um, no, I can remember seeing the, the first concept of this a few months ago, and uh, it's coming together nicely. I, I'm, uh, I'm quite impressed with the parking uh, compass or whatever you want to call it. I'm anxious to see how, how that looks in the final plan and really get down on the traffic flow. And, and, uh, but this is, going, this is pretty remarkable. Um, encouraged about this, the charging state or yeah the charging stations and the solar on top of the the building um, the facing seems like it would be adequate to do those two sections of the building and kind of leave the uh, tall part uh, pretty much alone um, I don't have any questions for the applicant Mr. Chair this is looking good thank you Rick Robin Yeah, I agree with my colleagues. I think this is a fabulous design. I applaud your vision, and um, I wish all development was like this in Scarborough, the amount of low-impact development that has really been thoughtfully put into here as well as sustainability is just, it's tremendous. I wish more developers and had the same vision that you did. Um, the, with the bioretention, the utilizing the grades, the you know, I know it's not natural hydrology anymore. Everything's been altered, <coughs> but the fact that you're going with what's there is is just really. Um, uh, I think it it really marries well with the theme of wellness and um, harmony, kind of a thing. So, I I just want to I guess give you a couple reminders as you keep going proactively with these. Um, um, ideas is the aquifer protection overlay zone that we're in thinking about how we're going to prevent uh, you know oil and hazardous chemicals you know from entering the aquifer which you know has written right into the ordinance and things like that um, so keep continuing to think proactively about that I really appreciate that um, a robust landscape plan you know uh, um, you know, do whatever you can with the with the buffers um, and and um, the the you know uh, the natural. It, it's it's it, because it is a reclamation site. It's hard to say. You know, go with whatever the natural vegetation is. But you know, if if what we've seen here with your development is any indicator into what the landscape plan will be, I'm I'm sure we won't be disappointed. Um, I would also like to to remind you again, just uh, as a proactive measure to um, when you do have the pre-application meeting with DEP or the application meeting, to please let Angela Blanchett know so that she can be oh, part of this. Know. And I really feel like this <laughs> is, um, this is potentially, I think, a case study in development in, in Southern Maine, in Scarborough, and I think both the town and DEP will be really excited to, to have this meeting. So I, on, I only have applause for you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. Rachel? Yeah, I'd like to echo a lot of what my colleagues have said. This is a very exciting project. Um, I guess Parkway too long has been kind of a, a wasteland. Uh, when my husband and I first moved here, we looked around and basically there was just about nothing on there. And we've recently seen some um, some great uses of of the parkway. Uh, I was pleased by the uh, comment of uh, the folks from Divine Capital, um, and I would suggest that you follow up with that as I look at your plan and the potential for the walkways around the ponds. Um, if there is any way that walkways can be and trails can be connected uh, with the Beacon, uh, the Gateway Apartments. Uh, I think that would be very positive. I think the folks who are starting to rent now in uh, the Gateway Apartments are the sort of um, constituents, if you want, uh, consumers, who would also appreciate these sorts of amenities. Uh, and I can see that as a great benefit to both of you. Um, when we get, when we start to look at this phase, what we start to do is to ask questions 
that you don't necessarily have to have the answer to right now, but at some point somebody on the board is going to say, so what do you think about, or why have you done that, or did you think about this? And that's not meant to be critical. It's meant to give you an opportunity to really take a look at what it is you're doing uh, and, and to help us move this through so that we can get this started and Scarborough can benefit from a development like this. So saying that, I'm going to ask you some of those questions have you thought about? I've thought uh, about every one of them, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Uh, First of all, the architecture, I, I applaud you. That's, I, I think the way that building is going to fit into its environment is, uh, is outstanding. Um, as I look at the plans, I have a couple of questions. And I am looking at A1. And I know, uh, I know what you've discussed is that these are possibly uh, medical areas, um, I suppose doctors, it could be yoga, it could be other health activities. Uh, but I think one of the things that is important for you to do is consider how you're going to direct people to those suites. For instance, I'm looking at suite 101, which you would access either through suite 100 or from the outside. And if it's from the outside, how are the customers, how are your clients going to get there? Is there a walkway? Is there signage that directs them there? So the signage to a, directing folks to a building that you've already kind of said, it really doesn't have a front door, it has in a sense four fronts to the building because each one is, is different and each one is unique ending the confusion of folks who are trying to figure out where they're going is very important. And that's done by walkways and that's done by good signage. So I would suggest you start to think about how that would work now. Uh, the other question I had is, is there any opportunity or is there any thought that these suites ultimately might be subdivided? Is the building set up for that, especially the second floor? I'm looking some pretty large suites there. Yes, yeah, so to that, the again, these are pretty schematic. So we've <laughs> what we've done to show this kind of our, our first little rendition here is to show how these two spaces could potentially be broken up. So yes, in, in one instance, if if this particular scenario were to exist, um, you know, there, there would be some sort of path that comes out here and this could be, you know, this would be an entrance to a suite. If this were one tenant, if you know, if one tenant wanted to take the whole thing, this could be a little side entrance or employee access. The, the main focus, the main entry is here. This would be the signage. This this whole area here, when you walk in, it's all vaulted, and this dotted line here, you see, that's open to the second floor above, and it's an open balcony, and there's a lot of height in there, and it's very dramatic. Um, so there would be there'd be some signage in there. There'd be some you know directional uh, directory. Uh, for the rest of the sign, uh, for the rest of the tenants, excuse me, um, and then again, this this would be one tenant potentially. This will be another, and and yes, if a tenant wanted you know to split this space or, you know, there there's a lot of flexibility we have right now, and and again, this is open to below. Um, we haven't really shown entrances into suites a little bit here on this side, but yeah, where we're still working on getting some tenants and. You know, working through leases, yes. The, yeah. Those are all, it, it's still a little fluid right now and flexible. Well, and, and I, I understand that. My suggestion is as you go along, find a way to talk to us in your application about Absolutely. the fluidity. Absolutely. Uh, and how that can be adapted depending upon the tenants. Yep. Absolutely. So then we're not asking you, so how is somebody going to get from here to there? Yeah. Okay? Just, just sitting here, I'm, I'm already thinking about how to... Uh, and of course, in terms I don't want to change oh, it, but I'm already thinking about ways to. <laughs> uh, in terms to of in terms of landscaping, while well, these uh, the designs that you have here, as I said, are, are really I, I think wonderful for that uh, area. Uh, you're going to need to show us the landscaping in uh, relationship to the building. Oh yes. So yeah. again, sometimes it's there are things that are in the site plans that you know you're supposed to have, and somehow or other they don't get into 
the next application, and then we're sitting here saying, so where is it? Uh, so the, these are the things that we think of now that give you an opportunity to move your application through, in some cases, faster as you think about these things and you include them so that we don't have to, we don't have to ask about them. Um, now, the access is going to be, um, the, the term that's been used off of Hygus Parkway uh, is that that's a driveway um, that gets from uh, Hygus Parkway to phase one to the that's new place. That's actually referred to as Ingleside Drive. Okay, so if it is, if it is a road uh, and you've talked about sidewalks, which of course you will have at least on one side, if not both, nod your head yes. Okay, good. Um, but also you've talked about this being a bicycle area and you have, a, you have allowed for uh, bike racks yes. uh, on the plan. Are you going to allow for a bike lane on that road? We can explore that. All right, I, I think that would be something, mm -hmm. again, to take a look at as um, more and more people move to, to bicycles and, and especially the, the folks that I think you're going to be attracting here. I would be remiss if I did not say that I've got some concerns about the causeway. And I expressed them, uh, I think, when you came before us the first time. Uh, and you're talking about raising the, the causeway a bit. Mm -hmm. um, I'm worried about you, what you can't see, not about what you can see on the top of that causeway. And a causeway that works for uh, a few cars might not work if you've got a restaurant with 75 seats in an event, let's say a wedding, mm -hmm. uh, going on and the tent and a lot of traffic. And I have concerns about what is underneath the water, not what's on top of the water, mm -hmm. not what can be seen in the causeway. So I would like to see uh, an engineer an engineer take a very hard look and careful study of what's under the surface of that causeway to ensure that it is safe, uh, to ensure that um, as the seepage goes from pond to pond and the water's levels change, that that seepage has not created a weakness under that as causeway. All those comments are what we're evaluating right now. Okay, well, in terms of evaluation, I hope I see that uh, engineering study. You will. Very good, when you come forward. Uh, I think, once again, uh, this is a great idea. I have no, no problems with your removing uh, the, the trees that are dying. I have no problems with your removing invasive species. At some point, we'll want to see what you're going to be doing, especially with the landscaping. Mm -hmm. Just a little, a little hint that I like... Um, and I really appreciate a, a attempts to um, help the pollinators to have the sort of gardens that attract the bees and the monarch butterflies uh, and the hummingbirds. So as you're looking at that and you're looking at, uh, at what you're going to do with that, just as a note, that property uh, that's, um, uh, well, it's owned by, I believe, Kerry Anderson, mm -hmm. uh, that there are, there are going to be some industrial buildings along Hygus Parkway. Right. Uh, the distance pretty much from Ingleside Drive close to the second pond is going to be a wildflower meadow. So carrying that theme through creates a really a cohesive whole from Hygus Parkway from the road all the way through the, the back of that property that you have. And I think that would create a fantastic visual for folks as they're going through. Mm. And I think I've probably given you my thoughts and hope Appreciate that you're, uh, I'm looking forward really to seeing what you come back with. I think this is great. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Rick. I think Rachel did a good job of covering mm -hmm. most everything, so I don't really have any other questions. I do think it's a great project. Um, <coughs> I have some questions later, I'm sure, but as far as a conceptual master plan, I think you've got everything you need. Thanks, Rick. Uh, Thank so uh, I'll, I'll sit here and I'll tell you the architecture I think is great. Uh, that building looks nice. 
If I had to highlight a couple of concerns for down the road, I think um, I like the parking design. It's unique. Um, a little worried about the flow of that, but I'll, I think you're going to figure that out before you get to that next phase. Um, you do have crossover. It would appear some of the directional arrows in their current form, you'll have crossover. Um, some people going left and some people trying to stay right, and it um, looks like it could get messy in that triangle area, but I'm sure you can figure that out. My other concern would be uh, parking fields. If you do have events down in that back, I don't know if you have enough parking um, to supplement, you know, restaurant use, office use, and then maybe an event at the same time. And, I, you know, I'd hate to see an, any type of encroachment of the parking spots of any of your neighboring businesses. And not only that, I think what you're developing here in its entirety is going to attract people who just want to park and walk. Um, so I think keeping that in mind as you develop uh, into that first phase, uh, you know, whether it's parking fields for those those types of users that are separate from maybe the office type or the restaurant type of user. So, um, and then additionally, um, just making sure that um, you're thinking ahead when you talk about the restaurant proposed use, if you're going to have outdoor seating on that patio, which I'm sure would be a huge bonus, you know, having a meal and overlooking the pond, um, you know, make sure that that's appropriately accounted for in your calculations, whether it's a seasonal and, uh, but I'm sure Jamel will help remind you of all that as you get yep. to that point. So um, outside of that, though, I think for a master conceptual plan, you're, you're in the right spot. Um, I assume you don't have any um, other issues with staff comments and that you'll be ironing them out as you yep. get to that next yeah, spot. All right. Pretty straightforward. So with that said, uh, I'll move to approve the conceptual master plan titled Totem Pond. Can we do it during discussion? Oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> Proposed by Michael Scammon as depicted on the plan set prepared by Mitchell and Associates dated 72519 and with the following, following findings. Findings, the planning board has reviewed the application and supporting documentation and finds that the conceptual master plan is consistent with the site inventory and analysis and reflects a reasonable utilization of the site given both environmental and built environmental considerations. The conceptual master plan is also consistent with the space and bulk standards, the development standards and other requirements for plan developments in the Highest Parkway Zoning District. During site plan review, the final location of all the utilities, driveway, location and parking will be determined. The site plan submission shall address the remaining staff review comments in the memo dated 8 12 19. Second. We have a motion and a second. Do we have discussion? Roger. Uh, yes, uh, and this is probably directed towards Mr. Scammon. Uh, uh, to follow up on something Rachel was asking, on the additional uh, spaces besides the uh, restaurant, I thought, it was my impression that those were going to be part of the like uh, breakout rooms for the, um, you know, the, the wellness activities that are going there. Are they going to be? Do you do you envision them being more like business, you know, separate businesses, but are related to wellness? Could I ask you to? Uh, step up to the podium and just introduce yourself. How you doing? Mike, Mike Scammon, 39 Ingleside Drive. Uh, Roger, uh, we don't have tenants at this point, uh, but we are searching out. We're, we're interviewing. Okay, so it will be tenants. It will be tenants, yes. Okay. okay. And, and you know, the only other question I have is, will this facility be open to the public if they, for instance, they want to go into the restaurant or if they, well, they want well, to certainly, say, yes. or they want to um, use one of those breakout rooms or those, well, actually, there's not going to be a breakout room, so I guess that's, that's a mute question. <laughs> okay. Um, right now, they're just open spaces. We, we're looking at um, the cafe, conf conference rooms. There's been a request for several doctors to have air, air, small areas we could have breakout rooms. Uh, we don't have tenants at this point. Um, uh, there's going to be some more drawing as far as internally. Right now, it's just the, the box concept we've got. Um, but we're working towards that. Great. Great. All right. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on this? All in favor? So there's unanimous. Thank you. Good luck.
Next item is Maine Medical Center request a site plan review for 80 Campus Drive, Assessor's Map R76, Lot 4B. Jamel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So this project, as you guys all know, is uh, located at the existing uh, Maine Med Campus at 80, or in the Business Office Research Zoning District. So the applicant was last before you all in June with the site plan submission. And just as a reminder, uh, they're proposing 108,000 square foot, three-story medical building at their existing campus. So the applicant is still waiting uh, for their, as far as we know, the applicant's still waiting for their main DEP permit. Uh, so tonight's review should focus on the remaining main issues um, identified as traffic and parking. So as requested, the applicant has provided uh, additional, quite a bit of additional traffic information with the application. Uh, the applicants noted that 250 new uh, vehicle trips will be entering and leaving the site. Um, given the significant amount of new trips, uh, the town's traffic consultant has suggested the following improvement, improvements uh, to the Route 1 Green Acres Hillcrest intersection. So I'm just going to go through these real quick. Uh, the replacement of the existing yield sign within the right, slip, right turn slip lane approach with a stop sign and red flags. Uh, provide a left turn, left turn striping improvements for the dual left turn out of Green Acres Lane. And then install radar based detection and dilemma zone protection uh, on the Route 1 approaches to reduce the number of crashes due to motorists running red lights at the intersection. So the board and the applicant should be sure to discuss these uh, suggested improvements. And finally, as suggested by the board, the applicant has reduced the amount of parking and impervious surface on the site. So the applicant should provide the board with an update on that. I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Jamel. If you'd like to just kind of briefly go over, uh, go over some of the items that staff has touched on, some of the more recent changes to your plans, appreciate it. Sure can. Uh, good evening, Steve Kasabian, Chief Administrative Officer at Maine Medical Partners, uh, Maine Medical Center's own medical group. Um, I keep my comments very brief and let others get up and, and deal directly with some of the uh, questions and comments that have come from staff. But um, last time we were here, we spoke to you about our protest, uh, pedestrian amenities, electronic vehicle accommodations, uh, landscaping plans, siting plan, site plans, lighting plan, and then also the parking utilization, which we've done a considerable amount of work on and will uh, cover just a bit later. This evening, we'll cover air, the elevations for the buildings, some screening that was requested and, and discussed earlier for portions of the building, and then several site plan changes that we think are, will be of interest to you and address questions that we have uh, received to date. Um, very quickly, I'm just reminding you guys of the scale of this project. Um, this is neurosciences, neurosurgery, pain management, neurology vascular surgery, and then otolaryngology, your nose and throat, as we commonly call it, um, going to occupy this building in a fairly densely uh, planned site, which is really code for we're using every inch we can to take care of patients. Uh, these are expensive buildings to build, uh, so we're being very smart with our space. Um, the three practices today are spread about South Portland and Portland. Um, not particularly easy for our patients to navigate and we, we make them travel to a number of different locations to get their care today. This will greatly improve that access for those patients. Good evening members of the board. Um, my name is Robert Corson. I'm from uh, SMRT Architects and we're going to go through the, some of the comments that came back from the, from the latest um, uh, staff comments so that we can kind of go through those uh, and um, so p part of that obviously is a recap of the of the building which we've just discussed uh, as far as the size of the building kind of the uh, um, height of the building parking spaces uh, things like that associated with that one of the comments obviously was uh, uh, talking uh, about ultimately um, plans associated with the building this is a ground floor plan uh, we have uh, towards the top of the page, kind of a um, access point on the top of the page. Uh, the front of that front of the uh, building would be uh, impacted or below grade uh, on the front of the building. Uh, that's first floor, which is a kind of um, drop-off location at the bottom of the page, kind of the main entry point. Uh, egress stair off to the left-hand side, and an egress stair that would uh, connect both. <laughs> all floors uh, on the uh, rear of the building. Again, because the project's broken up into two 
kind of distinct phases. Uh, this is a what we call a core and shell, kind of the exterior building envelope, skin, uh, vertical circulation as part of this. We're still in the process of developing the actual interior fit-up plans that actually associated with each of the practices. Uh, so as we get go further, we'll, um, we're using this. Obviously, these are the organizi organizing pieces, which is elevators and stairs that actually will help uh, uh, keep the organization within the, within the actual clinic area. Um, again, it, the three floors, uh, the second and third floor, uh, fundamentally the same footprint uh, roof plan. Let me go back with a, a one stair, which is off to the top of the page, um, which is accessing to the roof um, with an actual stair that goes onto the roof where uh, systems and some of the air handlers and other mechanical equipment will be. Uh, the other uh, request, obviously, is exterior elevation with uh, specific material selection. Uh, as noted before, we have it's primarily a, a brick building, and then the panels are a composite panel of stone and fiberglass stone panels that uh, make up the, the uh, kind of the lighter tone on the building, uh, front canopy to allow for pedestrian drop off and also allow for any kind of uh, ambulance uh, to be pulled up to there if they happen to need to pick up a patient or, or drop off. So this would be the front really basically facing uh, subtly uh, the top elevation really kind of facing to, to the westerly side, the stair kind of uh, component really, which is the lighter tone one on the top elevation and on the both uh, left-hand side um, for vertical circulation. Uh, the rear of the building, uh, kind of the uh, bottom page, uh, so that's basically the, the back which faces a, uh, another parking area. Uh, loading and service to the left-hand side, that'll actually where all the utilities come in, uh, the generator, loading dock, uh, trash, things like that, uh, coming going in and out of the building. Uh, also an access point. And, and to the uh, <coughs> top of the page really is our easterly elevation, uh, facing a good portion of the uh, upper level parking would be uh, facing in that area. Uh, the screening that we actually described last time, which is uh, this is at the, at the loading dock area to screen uh, what I'll call the easterly and the westerly side of the, the, the loading dock area. Again, it's uh, an aluminum um, fencing to allow both uh, you know, screening as well as uh, maintaining some of the lower maintenance of something that's a, a pre-painted, um, pre uh, pre-finished product versus, uh, say, wood fencing or things like that to be able to ma maintain over time. Uh, overall site plan, again, our building is uh, uh, central to the, to the plan. Uh, and I'm going to go to the, what I'm uh, showing here. Actually, there are two, uh, two kind of changes that we are actually indicating on the plan. To the uh, center top, we actually have taken the parking field of the center top and, and actually reoriented the uh, aisles. So actually it will be two uh, long aisles. Uh, this allowed us to uh, accommodate some of the pedestrian circulation, which we discussed before, plus the idea of, of looking at a reduction in the actual parking spaces. Uh, on the, just off to the left-hand side would be another change, which was uh, the change to the connection to the parking lot, which is adjacent to the surgical center. Uh, which again allowed us to uh, make some adjustments and reduce some parking. I'll actually go to a little more detail of that that section. So this is the upper upper lot. Again, as you notice, the uh, the <coughs> sections, uh, the two sidewalks, added sidewalks, kind of going both to the uh, the northerly and the southerly side of the of the lot, kind of collecting the upper lot, and then going into filtering down into the two uh, sidewalks, which were in the previous plan that'll bring from the kind of the easterly side to the to the uh, westerly side of the site. Uh, at the upper right hand corner we actually have indicated 39 paper spaces or you know paper parking spaces. Again uh, we have gone to uh, basically 452 spaces with 39 uh, spaces for future development. One of the questions that came up on the uh, comments was was this going to be accounted for as part of the stormwater management uh, system, and yes, it would be. It would be constructed and, and designed 
uh, to accommodate that for future development. The grading and everything else would be uh, set up and, and prepped for future development uh, if that need ever came about. Um, so those are some of the, the sections on that. Again, on the left-hand side of the page, it was a request for uh, a guardrail on the left-hand side, which is the northerly side of the uh, site. Um, we can, uh, one of the things we will, as far as the, uh, there was another request from some additional um, guardrails, which we'd like to just, you know, uh, discuss that further with uh, um, staff just to figure out exactly where that would begin and end so we can uh, uh, kind of um, come to an agreement on where that portion is. Uh, we have our, um, on this upper lot, we have the charging stations and <coughs> Luckily, we got the, the uh, pre precluder of, from the earlier meeting talking about ultimately what the management plan is for that. Right now, we're looking at uh, those will be managed on a, uh, open during uh, normal business hours. Uh, and then uh, I think taking to heart the idea that we need to have a kind of an operational plan about um, type and um, uh, some sort of indicator of the, those, uh, those spaces. Uh, the lower lot, again, one of the two things we did is we raised that back section of the parking lot uh, and uh, discontinued the connection to uh, the parking lot for the surgical center. Um, with that, we, there were some advantages because of the, uh, the amount of um, ledge that's on the site and some of our stormwater was uh, in that area. So uh, this actually was an opportunity to both uh, um, have less disturbance on that existing lot and to uh, actually reduce some of the, the overall uh, parking areas there. Uh, we continued on with the connecting, uh, pedestrian connection from that lot uh, back up to our pedestrian circulation uh, up at the main, or uh, the back side of the building. Uh, so we can continue that kind of uh, uh, overall campus circulation. Uh, in this one, it actually, you kind of see the bluish tone, which is on the upper side of the upper lot, as well as to the left side of the lower lot, um, which we have uh, kind of snow storage indicated. Uh, one of the things we need to do is make sure that that uh, snow storage area is carried through so it actually is illustrated on the actual site plans uh, as part of the, the request from, um, from staff. And that really kind of goes through the, the site plan uh, portion. Obviously, they, some of the other comments we had to do with uh, additional signage, uh, yield signs, uh, some uh, traffic signs that are around the uh, curves that are on, on uh, uh, campus drive. Again, those have been added uh, so that uh, kind of internal circulation arrows um, to indicate direction uh, as far as one way signage to indicate the uh, one-way areas versus uh, two-way areas. Um, the stop sign at the four-way intersection that's directly in front of the, the entry to the, to the lot. Uh, so I think all the signage that was associated with the comments uh, were, were added from the traffic signage portion. That's it for site plan. Any uh, questions regarding the site plan portion? Or do you want to? Uh, just is that the? Do you have any more presentation for us, or is that pretty? You want to have uh, Randy uh, talk more about the the um, traffic and circulation portion? Yeah. Why don't you go, go through your sure. whole presentation, and then okay. we'll. Okay. Thanks. I'm Al Green. I'm director of planning for Maine Health. And just want to say that Maine Medical Center and Maine Medical Partners are really excited about this project. Um, and we're also very conscious about connecting uh, project updates with our neighbors. Um, we've already connected with the property owner and the residents from behind the, abut the uh, abutting site behind just to the east um, and are planning to post updates about the project on our project website, which also has project updates for the Bramhall campus project in Portland. Uh, that information is available there. As to the timeline, this is the third time we've, we've been in front of you, so appreciate all the time that you've spent talking to us about our project. And we anticipate 
uh, Maine State a DEP approval, hopefully in October, plan to come back to you around that time. So, at the, so now I'll open it up for questions. All right, thank you very much. Um, we do have an opportunity for public comment. If there's anyone here that would like to speak on this item, please approach the podium, give your name, and a couple of comments. Seeing none, I'm going to close public comment. Um, let's see. Let's start with Jen on this one. Okay. Um, I do. I so. Um, Thank you for your efforts in adding pedestrian connectivity into that upper lot. I think that's a good addition. Um, and with just with the size of that parking field, I think it will be. Um, I think it will be a, a benefit to everyone. Um, I just wanted to clarify, actually, in your presentation, and there's a couple of. Um, so I'm looking at the difference here between sheet C, zero 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 the cover sheet and then um, we have the overall plans but specifically sheet <coughs> C103 on the cover sheet it looks like there are no in the area that you're talking about connecting the so the lower proposed parking area with um, the parking field for the surgical center I think if you go back one more slide yeah that one um, the layout on the cover sheet just looks a little bit different, so I just wanted to clarify that you are, are those, are the parking spaces around the curve in that red box, are those existing or proposed? Around the curve here, uh, you can't see my cursor. <laughs> like yeah. ad adjacent to the yellow, the walkway adjacent that's been highlighted line, in yellow. Those are existing. Existing, okay. Yes. Okay. And so what, <clears throat> what you were saying was just that you're, you're changing the grade of the lower lot in order to sort of meet tie into those a little bit better? Yes. Correct. Yeah, actually, yeah. There's, a, there's a pretty significant grade change between the new proposed lot on the lower side of that red box right. and the existing spaces, <clears throat> and the change is that we're actually not going to be impacting the grade as much as we were. Gotcha. Us. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Um, <clears throat> okay, other questions that I had? Um, in going through your response to comments, the item for lighting, the um, town staff asked that the, that the lights be dimmed after the close of business, and I, your response didn't seem to, just left that still a little bit unclear. It sounds like you'll maintain control of those lights, but it was unclear about whether or not you intend to dim them after you're closed. We will maintain control, and, and the, the plan currently is that we will plan to dim them. Uh, we still need to go through the, um, our internal security to make sure that's okay, sure. but um, future submissions will reflect that. Okay. Um, and then the comment on signage, it sounds like you're, <clears throat> um, there's a couple of sort of traffic and circulation signage questions that came up, but then also you sort of allude to looking at your, your signage package overall for the um, for the entire development, um, but actually with your timeline that you just showed, my question is now more clear about or about future submissions on that. Um, I was curious if you'd be coming back to staff for a review on that, but it sounds like you'll be you'll be back in front of the board anyway. Um, so I, I assume that you would. Is that something that you think you'll have uh, prepared for us to look at in October? Yes, we'll ha we'll have it. And that, actually, you you touched on one of my. Mm -hmm questions that I was going to ask after we're, we're done with questions, and that's as to um, the, the questions and comments that we've received so far, uh, asking whether or not we, we felt that we needed to come back and, and present after we've got the DEP approval. It, it sounds like there's, you know, I know, I feel like we talked a, a fair amount about signage last time, and, um, you know, if you're sort of looking at... <clears throat> A new sign program for the entire um, for the entire site. I, I would be interested in seeing that. Um, you know, again, partially for the um, for the circulation and kind of traffic safety, but other things like um, you know, do you have parking areas that you're intending to be solely for patients or for staff um, for the general public? You know, if you 
if there's access to any of the <clears throat> pedestrian network on um, on your site or things of that nature. Just curious. Okay. And then my only other statement, I suppose, is that um, I appreciate the staff comments on um, mitigation at that, that Route 1 intersection and we'll look forward to post-project monitoring um, to see if any of those mitigation elements have helped to kind of address the sort of traffic crash problem that <laughs> that was identified out there. Um, you know, not technically a high crash location, but certainly enough problem activity there that <clears throat> it, it's it's um, worth worth working on. So hope hope that you're able to address a couple of those. Yeah, that's that's the plan. Great, thanks. Thank you, Jen. Uh, Rick. Uh, more on the on the building. Um, is there the thought of maybe fencing in? Uh, I assume you're going to put some RTUs up on the top, and is that going to be visible? Will those units be visible from uh, the Route One coming both ways, and probably not coming from South Portland? But uh, it. Give some thought about maybe uh, fencing or cover those up so they can't be seen from um, Route 1, if it's possible. And then a uh, uh, detailed photometric drawing in your next submission would be helpful with the, uh, the fixture types and making sure that they're all full cut off on the abutting, abutting side. And the Other than that, I'm all set. Thanks, Rick. Rachel? This may be shocking, but I have very little left to say. <clears throat> um, I appreciate your thoughts about the uh, charging stations and that you're going to look at how they're going to be managed. I think um, they're an excellent feature, but they have to be thought out very carefully. Uh, and am I correct on the architecture? The, the last time we had a discussion, um, the side of the building facing Route 1 had been pretty blank, and I had a question about um, adding some interest to that. Had you done that? Rob, can you help me with that? Sure. I, I seem to think, I, I think that you have, but yeah, I'm just so not clear. If you look at the top elevation, that's actually the Route 1 elevation. Yes. So a lot of this, the uh, um, area that's on the, what I call the bottom uh, left-hand corner, <coughs> so that's a landscaped area. Uh, in that corner, um, so that's a and, and you've changed the uh, color of the siding. Yep, changed the coloration of the panels. It brought the panels down to the to grade. I, I think that meets the intent of the of the design standard. So right. I appreciate that you've done that. Thank you. And that's all I have. Thanks, Rachel. Robin. Um, how? <clears throat> With respect to snow storage, how will those snow storage um, requirements be related to facilities management or the the contracted uh, uh, property management folks? So, uh, Maine Medical Center, Maine Medical Partners Facilities Management is actually involved in the writing of how Correct. this plan is is drawn up. So, very involved. Do you think it'll be contracted folks or will it be facilities management? Uh, I folks? think it is contracted folks. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So that will be included in sort of like whatever uh, contractual agreement that you would have with that yes. person. Great. Um, you had asked um, whether or not you thought that uh, you'd need to come to the planning board again. I, just from, from my opinion, my humble opinion, um, I think you have a few more things to do. We've talked about the auto turn simulation, the photometrics, and I'm going to harp on the landscape plan and things like that. But I think you, you're in a really good trajectory, and if you continue working with staff like you have, um, I, you know, I, I see that you're on a really good path, and that uh, you know you'll come before us with your, with all of your um, uh, approvals in hand, so that we can we can move forward. Uh, maybe one more time um, because I think we do want to see a little bit bit more but you have plenty of time to do that and staff will help you polish it all up I think um, I want to encourage you to you probably have had all your meetings with your with the DEP for permits and things like that um, I know other towns are different Portland they don't necessarily where they're 
delegated, but just a reminder to take to, to give notice to our town engineer whenever those happen. Um, it really helps a lot. Um, I see in the staff comments that there is a request for waiver from going from 25 feet uh, parking aisle width to 24 feet. Um, considering all the the work and reconfiguration that you all have done with the the uh, 39 paper parking spaces and the other work, uh, I and uh, the and that the stormwater management has attributed for all the future and existing parking spaces. I per I can't speak for my other fellow board members, but I personally would not be have an obje objection to the reduced aisle width. Uh, parking aisle width. Um, so I guess my last question to you all is if you're in agreement with the upgrades regarding traffic, uh, putting up new signs and the radar based detection and dilemma zone. So are you all sort of, there's, there's no uh, heartburn or deal breakers here kind of thing? You'll bring well, your neurology center <laughs> to Scarborough. It's okay, at an expense, so there's always heartburn, right? Yeah, but, I know. Yeah. Um, I think it, with the amount of traffic, and it, it'll yeah. just serve both the patients for, of Maine Medical Partners and the, the residents of the thanks. development behind. It's nice to hear that. And I would just um, like to say thanks for all the hard work that you have brought um, to the table and will be bringing to Scarborough. So thank you to Maine Health and Maine Medical Partners. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. <clears throat> Roger. <clears throat> I thought maybe you forgot me. Um, I don't have um, too much to say about this other than um, I'm assuming that regarding lighting, landscaping, et cetera, like that, it's going to be consistent with, with what you have on campus right now. Absolutely. Okay. Um, re regarding the, um, the intersection where Hillcrest and Route 1 is, have you had any discussions with the town engineer about that at all? And the reason I bring it up is because there's a Route 1 corridor study being done right now, and that's a primary focal point, that intersection there. And I believe what they're thinking about in the short term is restriping, you know, Route 1 in that area there and, and doing something with Hillcrest and, and, and the, uh, the street across, excuse me, across the way. So I would suggest you touch base with Angela just to make sure you everybody's on the same page when it comes to whatever you're doing there. Um, and I have nothing further. Thanks, Roger. So um, I'll just cap it off by saying, you know, I do appreciate the extra work you've taken into um, our last meeting where you incorporated the comments, especially reducing the number of parking spots, kind of going with that, the paper um, solution. And um, I think you've come, you know, pretty long way here, and it looks uh, really good. I think the next steps, of course, for aside from the DEP permit that you'll need in hand uh, upon your next visit, just making sure that we button up the intersection, some of the, uh, addressing some of Bill Bray's comments through the t traffic study, and then um, just some touch up with staff. And uh, you're, you're, you're right there. So um, aside from that, you know, we'll see you again as soon as the DEP permit comes in and you've touched it all up. Great, thank all you. Right. Thank mm -hmm. you. Great work. Next item on the agenda is Central Maine Power requests a site plan review for 35 Broad Turn Road, Assessor's Map R47, Lot 8B. Jamel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so this project is located along uh, Broad Turn Road uh, in the VR2 zoning district. Um, they were last, the applicant was last before the board uh, one or two meetings ago in July, and they're proposing a new substation facility um, comprised of a crushed stone yard, a single story control house, and associated electrical components. Not sure why it's not showing up on the screen, but we'll just keep going. Uh, so since the last meeting uh, with you all, the applicant has worked with the sanitary district on eliminating um, the existing driveway to the sewer pump house. Um, and it appears that the applicant's gonna provide access to the pump house uh, with, within their driveway configuration. And there's another comment uh, given, again, the project is located in the Phillipsburg watershed, um, which has been listed as an urban impaired stream. Uh, staff has provided several suggestions um, that the project be designed to preserve the 25-foot setback to the stream as much as possible. 
and also suggest that the applicant provide additional ground cover plantings um, between the paved area and the street and setback to help filter any stormwater runoff from the site. And I'll turn it back to you. Thanks, Jim. If you'd like to go ahead and introduce your, pro well, you don't have to introduce the project, we've seen it before. If you could just uh, tell us your name and then go over kind of some of the changes that you've had from, since the last time you were here and address some uh, staff comments specifically. Sure. Thanks. Yeah, my name is James Morin. I'm with uh, Burns and McDonald. I'm representing Central Community Power on this project. Certainly appreciate the board's uh, time coming visiting you before. Um, we have made um, some changes, um, as you've seen from our latest submission materials. Um, primarily changes uh, we're coordinating, as was indicated with the Sanitary District, about a combined access, which we've illustrated um, on this site plan. Um, we've also narrowed the, um, the access road um, from 20 feet to 15 feet to minimize impacts. Um, we've changed the, uh, the cover from gravel to uh, we're going to pave the driveway. Um, and we've uh, discussed and, and plan on additional plantings as Jamal indicated, um, between the driveway and within the 25 setback. Uh, I think those are some of our, our major changes that we've done. Um, um, and now I'd like to just you know, briefly go over the uh, latest comments, the peer review comments, and the um, <coughs> comment staff comments, um, and answer any questions after that. So the peer review comments talked about the uh, state permits, um, which we are, are been I think we talked about last time, but we have uh, received the, D, the uh, DEP comments, the uh, National Resource Protection Act permit by rule. We're waiting on the uh, um, comments back from the uh, full stormwater permit. I've reached out to our uh, DEP agent, and those are still under review, but I do have a copy of the uh, cover page for the uh, NERPA PBR. And we also have the Army Corps of Engineers um, permit in hand. So once we get the full stormwater permit, which hopefully will be within the next month, we can present those to the board uh, as our permits from the state. Um, there is a question uh, from the peer review regarding the utility pole relocations, which are along the, uh, the uh, road frontage. Um, and there was some question as to finally how they would be reflected, um, and maybe they're not adequately reflected. Those changes will be, be made um, and more clearly reflected on our uh, next submission material. Um, there was a question uh, about the basic standards um, to provide adequate erosion and sediment control plans that were part of the original submission. There was some indication that those were adequate, um, and these should be included as part of the final stamp set. Um, I believe we did provide the uh, stamp set, the 15 copies. They were signed, stamped, and dated um, by our engineer. Um, maybe the electronic um, PDFs weren't um, included, so I did have some confusion on the nature of this additional submission request since it was provided. Um, and we can discuss that after. Um, but we, since um, we will be making changes to the site and grading plan with the uh, pole location, relocation along the road frontage, um, that will be reflected in all of the plan sets, including the erosion and sediment control plan. So those will be updated to reflect those changes. And when we do, to do, when we do, do that, they will be stamped, um, signed, stamped, and dated by our engineer. Um, with regard to the, uh, the, the uh, board staff comments, um, there was uh, <coughs> some question as to whether we can preserve the 25-foot uh, stream setback and have um, uh, all of the plans reflect that there are no grading that will take place within the 25-foot setback. I believe currently there is some minor grading. Um, aside from the stream crossing, and uh, our engineer has indicated that we will be able to address that um, in, our, in our final plan submission to, to show that there will be no, no grading within the 25-foot setback. Um, the board uh, indicated, um, had some questions about the ground plantings within the 25-foot setback um, in the access way. Um, our original submission, um, and I'm not sure if it was clearly indicated that all um, ground disturbance would be seeded um, and be revegetated with natural um, grass. Um, we indicated that we would put some native uh, riparian species, um, which we've shown on our landscaping plan. Um, but I guess there was some question as to, pose to ground cover plantings to filter any stormwater runoff. Um, I guess I would be looking for the board. I, I interpret 
the ground cover plantings as, <coughs> as a grass, um, some uh, you know, native conservation mixed grass um, as a filter method, um, which we, we would do on all of our disturbed soils. We're proposing to augment that with the, uh, with the native riparian species, um, but to assure the board that the, the uh, ground cover plantings between the paved area and the 25-foot setback was always proposed um, as part of our site development and uh, revegetation plan. Um, but we, we, we can show that on our landscaping plan more clearly um, to answer that. Um, there was some questions uh, regarding um, removing the, um, changing the axis for the substation, uh, for the pump house, the sanitary pump house, where we're removing a portion of their uh, access along the road frontage um, and reallocating it um, off of a shared driveway. Um, I think we've reflected in our grading plan that um, that pavement would be pulled up and be revegetated. And I think there was some question as to revegetated with what. Um, right now, the, the plan is to um, plant grass, um, a native conservation mix of just grass um, along, that, along that section that would be, the pavement would be removed. And we can, you know, show that in our landscaping plan. Um, question was given that there will be two accesses to serve it off the proposed driveway, um, which would be considered a private drive, and we should coordinate with the police department on uh, on a naming of the private driveway. I had a meeting with uh, Deputy Chief O'Malley today, um, and we talked about the procedures to do that, um, and we will be coordinating. CMP will be coordinating with the. Uh, um, sanitary district on a common, you know, dr name for that shared driveway, um, and we can, you know, present that to the board. But just to know that we have met with um, Deputy Chief O'Malley and understand the procedures needed to uh, put together a driveway and uh, have that label, have that signage put in place. Um, with regards to our landscaping buffer plan, um, we will make some some minor changes based on. Um, the board's recommendation and uh, understand that it needs to be signed, stamped, and dated by a registered uh, landscape architect registered in the state of Maine, which will be part of our final submission. Um, and the, uh, I think the last issue um, on these comments were uh, regarding the stormwater management and given that the presence of wetlands on the site, the applicant should provide at least one row of silt fencing at, at the permit's limit of disturbance. Um, I'm not sure if it, you know, if it was noted, but it is, it is part of the sediment and erosion control plan that we do have in place, um, and that the, this erosion and sediment control plan shall be provided with the final submission. So we do have two rows, and one of you know, the rows would be silt fencing. Uh, I believe it, it was reflected. Um, so we will, you know, update, the plan will be updated anyway to reflect the, uh, the poles um, along the road frontage, as all of the plans will. Um, so once we submit our final submission, you know, that'll all be clearly shown on um, all of the plan sets, the site grading and erosion sediment control. So um, with that, I, I think I've uh, <coughs> answered all the questions, um, or at least. Um, Thank you very much. So if there's any follow-up, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you. Um, we do have opportunity for public comment. If there's anyone here that would like to speak on this issue, please approach the podium, just state your name and any concerns you may have. Okay, seeing that, I'm going to close public comment. Um, this one is pretty far along, so I'll just ask in general if there's anyone here that has a question or a comment from the board. Um, go ahead and jump right in if you're ready. Just me. Go ahead, Robin. Um, I think if you just talk with Angela, you'll get most of this stuff most of the way there because I feel like both page one and page two <laughs> with respect to landscape buffering and and planting are, are very much all related and can easily be fixed. I think that you're very much on the on the right path kind of thing. And I, the only thing I want to make sure of is that there is no grading within 25 feet of, of the brook that's traversing this. That's correct. There is no grading. Okay. Yeah. And so you will be... Will you be putting additional plantings in that 25-foot buffer? Not within the 25-foot okay. buffer. Okay. 
but outside the 25-foot yeah, so buffer. Yes, there's no grading. Okay. We, there'll be no yep. disturbance within the 25-foot buffer. So yeah. just continue to, sh if, if you could just improve the, the landscape plan to, sh to call those things out Understood. very, very clearly. That would be great. And that's all I have. Thank you. Is there anyone else with a comment or two? No. So uh, if the rest of this board is comfortable with it, I'd like to have this on the consent uh, agenda for next next meeting when your permit is in hand. Okay. Just put it on as a consent item. Um, save you some time and some homework. As long as you can work out all the issues with staff and address them, which it seems like you're well on your way to doing, yep. um, we'd have you on as a consent item, okay? Okay. Sound okay. good? So uh, if I can ask, with the regards to the final submission package, um, once we make these last minute, these adjustments, um, the final submission, I mean, I've been making, we've been making a, adjustments and changes to the documents that have been needed changes and I haven't, you know, presented any um, of the old material because it hasn't been any issues. With the final submission, is it um, submissions of the materials that we're making adjustments to or is it the final submission of all the materials that have been reviewed, you know, in prior meetings? If, you understand my, if I'm asking myself clearly or if you understand my question. Jamel? I think it'd make it easier administratively for a fresh set of everything. Okay. Um, but if you want to try and piecemeal it together, we can, we can work through that as well. Okay. And, and then with the, is it one copy for the final or is it 15 copies of all the materials? It would be a full submission, 15 copies. Um, as long as everything's addressed, it'd be just a consent and basically okay. ready with a motion okay. at the beginning of the next meeting. Okay. Very good. Thank you and good luck. Okay, thank you for your time. We're going to take a five minute recess. Okay.
Our next item tonight is Divine Capital LLC request a subdivision amendment for 1000 Gateway Boulevard, Assessor's Map RO40, Lot 14. Jamel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so this is uh, the Gateway Commons project, and it's located in a contract zone and in the Highest Parkway Zoning District. So the applicant's proposing a subdivision amendment to include the addition of two new commercial lots uh, with frontage along Gateway Boulevard and Highest Parkway. Uh, staff would like to note that the approved contract zone agreement does allow for commercial development, and so no contract zone amendment uh, is required. So given that Higus Parkway is a state of Maine restricted access roadway, staff would like to point out that the proposed commercial lots will be strictly required to have uh, access provided along Gateway Boulevard. And staff provided the board with a draft motion, um, and I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Jamel. The applicant would like to approach and give us their rundown, please. Uh, thank you, Will Conway, Sebago Technics. Um, I don't have a lot to add to what Jamel said. Um, if members uh, were on the board when we brought the, the Gateway Commons residential project forward, this area was always envisioned for commercial uses. We're simply here to formalize that into two lots. Each of them is about two acres. And we understand and expect a condition of uh, access restricted to Gateway Boulevard. Thank you. Thank you, Will. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak? If so, please approach the podium. <coughs> Seeing none, I'm going to close public comment. <coughs> uh, does anyone here on the board have any questions regarding this application? Yes, Rachel. Yeah, I, I don't really have a question so much as I, a, a comment, and I have heard nothing but praise around town and folks that I've talked to for the design of the of the facility, for the design, uh, and folks, you know, really like it. And I have, uh, so saying that, I will say I kind of have an expectation that whatever goes into these two commercial lots uh, is in keeping with the excellent design that's there so far. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Any other board members? Seeing none, with that, I'm going to move to approve the project titled First Amendment Subdivision Plat proposed by Divine Capital LLC as depicted on the plan set prepared by Sebago Technics dated 7-22-19 with the following findings and conditions. Findings. The first amended subdivision plan of the residences at Gateway Commons includes the addition of two new commercial lots with frontage along Gateway Boulevard and Highgus Parkway. Property is located within a contract zone, and the proposed amendment does not require a contract zone amendment with a town. The planning board has reviewed the application and supporting documentation, it finds that the proposed lot configuration adequately addresses the requirements of the subdivision and contract zoning agreement. Conditions 1. In accordance with the approved contract zone agreement, any development will need to foster the commercial and mixed use activities and amenities desired within the underlying Higus Parkway zoning district. 2. Given that Higus Parkway is a state of Maine limited access roadway, Access easements shall be provided to the two commercial lots along Gateway Boulevard. Three, prior to the signing of the release of the Mylar, plan note number 26 shall be updated to include the approved subdivision plan from 2017. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. That is the motion. Second. I have a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Show that to be unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is Divine Capital LLC requests a site plan amendment for 1000 Gateway Boulevard Assessor's Map RO40, Lot 14. Jamel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so the applicant here is proposing a site plan amendment now uh, to the same project uh, to eliminate a parking garage and modify the parking area adjacent to building 10,000. So staff has suggested several minor modifications to the plans and these have been incorporated into a draft motion for the board's consideration. I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Jamel. The applicant would like to please introduce the changes in the project. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Will Conway, Sebago Technics. Um, yeah, uh, again, not a, much, uh, a lot to add. Uh, if those of you wondering why are we removing a garage, it's because the, uh, they're finding now with the project being occupied that the surface parking is actually easier to utilize. You don't have to do a garage door. Uh, so that's the reason for it. But I have no further comments on the application. Thank you very much, Will. Um, we have opportunity for public comment on this item. If there's anyone here that would like to address, please step up to the podium. All right, seeing none, I'm going to close public comments. And again, I'm going to open this up to the board for discussion. Is there any questions or comments regarding this? Roger. 
I uh, just just uh, a couple of general questions. Um, I, I agree with, I think it was Rachel that said the, um, the site looks terrific. Um, the architecture and everything really is coming along nicely. And I'm just kind of curious, this is more for the public's um, benefit. Um, I'm just kind of curious, how, what, what percentage of the site is occupied right now? Do you, uh, ben Devine, uh, Divine Capital. Um, it's great news. Um, the question was uh, what percent is occupied, and we are uh, roughly halfway through the build phase, um, and we are 100% uh, leased right now, and uh, the next building will come online in October, and uh, as of today, there are 24 units in the building, and uh, we already have 11 leases. Uh, this is far exceeding our expectations, so well, we're really excited about it. That's good to hear. And yeah. um, another concern that was expressed by some people in the public was the number of children in the place. Yeah, and we've been asked by the town um, uh, to update them on that, and we are assembling that information and getting it to the planning department. But uh, I, I maybe misspeak, but we are below what we uh, projected as far as children in the school system. Um, I was over there today. There are a lot of grandkids that don't live there, but with their uh, grandparents in the pool and the like. But as school-age children, we are we're definitely below projections. But it's on us to deliver that information to, to the town, and we're assembling that now. Okay, good. Right. Thank you. Any other questions from the planning board? Hmm? All right. Seeing none, I have a motion here. Move to approve the site plan modifications proposed by Divine Capital LLC as depicted on the plan set prepared by Sebago Technus dated 7-22-19 with the following findings and conditions. Findings. The applicant is proposing to eliminate a parking garage and modify the parking area adjacent to a unit to unit 10,000 on the site. The property is located within the Haggis Parkway zoning district and a contract zone. The property is identified on the Town of Scarborough tax maps as map R40, lot 14. The planning board has reviewed the application and supporting documentation and finds that the proposed design of the site plan adequately addresses the site plan review and zoning ordinance requirements for site utilization, layout, access, internal, vehicular movement, pedestrian ways, landscaping, stormwater management, architecture, signage, utilities, and storage. Conditions. 1. The applicant shall revise the plan set to include A. An additional overall site plan depicting the proposed changes and apl applicable plan updates, i.e., parking, renumbered garages, etc. B. A revised plan title, as not noted in the staff review memo dated 8 12 19, this shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. And number two, the applicant shall address the peer review comments from Woodard and Kearns memo dated 8 8 19, this shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. That is the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Right, motion is second. Any discussion? All in favor? So that's unanimous. Thank you. Congratulations. Good luck. Next item we have on the agenda is F9 Properties, LLC, requests a site plan amendment for 374 U.S. Route 1 Assessor's Map, U39, Lot 45. Jamal. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So uh, this project is located in the B3 Zoning District at the former Atlas Fireworks Building. Just a quick reminder, the board did grant approval um, for the renovation of the existing structure on the property and the construction of a 700 square foot accessory storage building uh, back in June. As the board may recall, the applicant placed a temporary retail sales and showroom trailer on the site uh, during a review in June. Uh, the board granted approval of the project with the condition that the trailer be removed to the site given it was not provided on the plans. Uh, so the applicant did remove the trailer um, to comply with this condition. And they're before you this evening um, to place the temporary retail sales trailer on the site. Uh, staff would like to note that at the interdepartment review meeting, uh, just as a reminder, we meet with uh, staff, meets with all staff from all departments in the town to review all projects on upcoming planning board agendas. And at this meeting, staff from police, fire, public works, codes, and planning all ex con expressed concerns about attracting the public to an active construction site of the size. Uh, given that there is very little, very little room within the parking area and the plans do not show any separation from the construction site and where the customers would enter and park, staff does recommend that the trailer not be placed on the site. At this point, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Jamel. 
The applicant would like to introduce his name and the project, please. Yes, good evening. Andy Morrill from BH2M. Also with me is uh, Patrick Dugas, uh, the contractor. Uh, as Jamel said, the um, site plan was approved in June uh, earlier this year. Applicant is looking to amend the site plan to add a mobile showroom. Some brief details on the mobile showroom. You can look in the state on the uh, cover letter we provided as part of this application. There's kind of a summary in there from the, the applicant of why they wanted the uh, show, uh, mobile showroom on site. Uh, some of the highlights of that, the, the trailer houses the office for a store manager uh, to allow for appointments and show samples and finalize designs prior to the store opening. Uh, the trailer does not attract walk-up customers. Uh, no deliveries are anticipated to this trailer. No products are distributed out of this trailer. And the trailer will be removed uh, once the store is operational. Uh, the plans we've submitted, we've shown uh, two locations for this uh, trailer, depending on what portions of the site are being worked on. We'll touch on that again uh, briefly. But we did receive some the town comments. Uh, appreciate the, the town taking a look at this. Um, I understand their concerns are regarding safety and access to the construction site. I'm going to have Patrick come up and, and touch on that. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Patrick Dukas, Dukas Construction. Uh, I guess I will speak on behalf of F9 as well. While we share your concerns about access to the site, we do not want you know customers or consumers coming through our active job site. But what we worked out with F9 and on the overall site plan development is with the trailer location on the far left of the screen, you know, that area we can base pave as soon as next week and then fence that area off so the construction fencing ran behind the trailer, which would pretty much eliminate any customers uh, coming onto the job site. They'd be able to access it from the adjacent property, which we understand F9 properties are securing or securing access. It's an abandoned building, but there is a parking lot there. They could access the trailer for the two months roughly that we'll need to complete the site project and then the trailer could go away. We think that's the safest way for F9 to get what they want, which is to have an active sales office on site. We can do it without disturbing our process or introducing any pedestrians to the job site. So we think the left side is the way to go if you guys could accommodate it. So that's all I got. Thank you very much. Uh, we do have an opportunity for public comment on this item. If there's anyone here from the public that would like to speak, please approach the podium. Seeing none, I'm going to close public comments. Um, I mean, I'll just start off by saying, um, you know, without support from uh, the various town departments, I, I'm not inclined to um, support the, the request. And not that I, I uh, at the risk of not being business friendly, I got to tell you, Nothing, nothing I want more than to see a business get in there, get up and running, and have their customers come to them. But I think at this level, you need to have the safety measures. And if, uh, and if the town departments aren't behind it, then I don't see how I could say I am behind it. So that's, uh, that's my position. Anyone else here on the board is welcome to theirs. I also open it up to the rest of the board for any other follow-up questions as they see fit. Roger? Uh, yes. Um, could I ask your question? This, um, the latest proposal, the latest proposal you made about the fencing and everything? Yeah. Was that discussed with any department heads? No. I mean, I think what, what Andy's got here on the plans is locating the trailer over there. But if we were to have, you know, it's our active job site, if we were to allow the, the trailer, we would only allow so with fencing. So, no, I don't know if it's been discussed with any of the plan, the town departments. Because I, I can appreciate the uh, town's concern, the department has concerns. Sure. Um, but at the same time, I can see, I can empathize with the uh, the business trying to yeah. have something operating there. And I guess, does staff have any comments right now regarding the fencing? And does that change the equation from, from your point of view, I guess? Uh, yeah, it could. I think we'd have to sit down and, and review what that looks like. Um, it's hard to tell without seeing it so we haven't seen a plan like that so yeah at this point I don't really have any comment I, I guess that's that's where I'm at thanks Roger anyone else Rachel yeah um, the, the interesting thing is if what you would propose to put up was a construction trailer for the use only of the construction team 
it would be okay. But once we start to look at customers coming, uh, even by appointment coming onto a parking lot that is not in good shape because it's um, under construction, I, I have to go along with the, the town uh, departments. I, um, how far away are you proposing these, uh, the trailers to be from the side of the, uh, from the edge of the property? It's just one trailer, um, and it, but on, in, be in, in where the property it is. Line. So no buffering, just right up, a right budding. on the property line. We run the fencing right behind it, so nobody can really come onto the active job site and segregate the people from the job site. No, that, that, I'm sorry, that doesn't doesn't change my mind. I, I can't, uh, I wouldn't want to go against the uh, uh, the departments. I think it, it creates a problem to have non-construction workers wandering in. But they wouldn't be, that, that would be the point of the fence. At that point, it's trespassing, right? I'm just saying, that's what the fence is for. Anyone else on the board? Rick. Maybe there's an opportunity, I don't know, but there's a vacant building right next to it and has some parking. And I'm wondering if maybe finding out the owner of that <coughs> property and making a, an arrangement so the trailer can go there while the site's being That is the parking and access we are actively you know, pursuing. We could certainly have that discussion of locating the trailer there as well if that would be something the board would entertain we can go that route we we're trying to keep the trailer on our site but I would be hard-pressed to go against staff recommendations as well thanks Rick Anyone else? all right anyone on this board can make a motion I don't see any interest in that right now so fair enough thanks right, and thank maybe you. if something else changes you know have a discussion of staff and maybe their opinion of the site will change as well sure. okay good luck guys Next item on the agenda is score builders request a site plan review for the Downs Innovation District Assessor's Map U053 Lot 4. Jamel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so um, this is a pretty exciting moment in Scarborough. Um, phase two of the Downs is already under design, so that's uh, it's, it's quick moving. So the applicant's proposing a 5,000 square foot uh, building that will be used to run and operate their business. Um, the proposal is located on lot 32 uh, within the Innovation District on the corner of Innovation Way and Center Street, as you can see there. Um, so just a few, few comments. Uh, staff would like to note that site plan approvals will not be granted um, until several conditions of approval for the subdivision have been, um, approved, have been approved and review and approved by the Planning Department. Um, while these conditions have not been completed as of yet, the applicant is in front of the board this evening to start the site plan review process in anticipation of an approval at a later date. So the zoning standards for the innovation district require a landscape 10 foot wide buffer strip uh, along the front property line where it abuts a public street. So staff has recommended um, some additional plantings along the center street frontage in order to meet uh, the intents of the standards. Staff would also like to note that the applicant's proposing to provide 15 parking spaces instead of the required 18. The applicant has designed uh, three future spaces in case they are warranted at a later date. Uh, so the zoning standards do allow for the board uh, to reduce the requirements for parking where it is determined um, that a project can be occupied with less spaces than required. So the board should provide direction um, on whether the proposal can be carried on with the proposed uh, 15 spaces. And staff also has noted that there appears to be an opportunity to provide a future connection um, to the abutting lot to the east of the property. Uh, this would help to minimize turning movements onto primary roads and meet the intent of the site plan standards. Uh, we staff provided a host of review comments uh, for your review. It's the first time you're seeing it. And we'll uh, turn it back to you at this point. Thanks, Jamal. The applicant would like to introduce <laughs> your, your name and the uh, project. Yeah. Um, so I'm Bonnie Webster, architectural designer from Kevin Brown Architecture. Um, this is a uh, single occupant office building for a uh, business called Score Builders that they, they design uh, 
write study guide materials for physical therapy exam licensing exams. Um, it's not a business that sees any visitors. They have four full-time employees and one to four part-time employees any day. So normally it's about six people in the office every day. Um, and that's that's kind of it for the kind of the project introduction. Um, I know the comments are pretty long, and the uh, landscape architect is here too that can speak to a lot of them. Um, so I don't know if we would just want to get into those comments. Yeah, that'd be okay. fine. Do you want to just go through them? Yeah. Hello, my name is Seth Kimball with Aceto Landscape Architects. Um, I realized there was a there was a handful of landscape related questions, some to do with plantings, um, connectivity with the drive, um, and kind of width of the drive, and also parking. Um, just to kind of give a brief summary of the overall design. Um, so this is kind of a unique placement of the building in that it's kind of anchoring the corner for the public space, which includes um, across the street from Center Street. Um, a couple of benches, a kiosk um, for a bank of um, deliveries for like UPS and benches and also some bike racks. Um, our entrance to the main building, um, so at the intersection of Innovation Way and Center Street, um, we have carried over the same language. That, um, those, those benches are actually part of the um, overall subdivision improvements. Um, but we've coordinated simultaneously to include the entrance that's kind of incorporated with, with that kind of corner of public space. Um, we have a bank of plantings that's fairly robust along the front on Innovation Way and along the extents of, um, of Center Street. Um, where the plantings end, and this is a, related to one of the comments, um, is at adjacent to the edge of the signage. Um, um, the clients would like to kind of keep that open for that reason. Um, we've carried it close to halfway down the building and along Innovation Way along the full length of the building. Um, there's street trees along there, so keeping that viewpoint from the intersection open to the signage is important to the client. Um, as you enter the site, um, there's lawn area. I, you know, from a design standpoint, we've been trying to balance um, what is planted, we have a lot of meadow, natural meadow, um, to eliminate maintenance and, and lawn. Um, I'd say there's a good balance of usable lawn space. Um, we've created an outdoor space for employees, which is um, included as kind of like a, a pea gravel, stone dust under a canopy of um, larger trees along Innovation Way. Um, there's a layering of, of kind of mid to high shrubs that creates a layering system as you approach the building from the parking lot. Um, past the lawn and then into the employee entrance. Um, near the delivery area where the delivery bay is, uh, we have a, a bosque or an alley of um, red maples. Um, it's in, do, uh, doing two different things. It's, um, it's helping to screen the bay from the public view along Center Street and um, also to provide uh, design time. Um, Parking spaces, as um, Bonnie had mentioned, there's 15 parking spaces with three potential future spaces. Um, given that there's only a handful of employees, uh, four to six, um, we tried to reduce the amount of impervious surface. Um, as far as deliveries are concerned, um, we do have access to a, a, a garage bay, but um, the deliveries are actually by very um, box trucks, and the intent is to pull in and they have a hand cart that comes out um, th that will be lifted down from a gate and brought into the bay. So there isn't a loading dock. Um, so we, we try to be sensitive to the amount of impervious surface, um, the use and of, of how deliveries will be taken care of. Um, and also deliveries, just want to note that um, will only be six to ten times a year. Uh, so it's very infrequent and like I said, they're in the smaller box trucks um, and, and hand carried into the bay. Um, is there any other specific questions the board had? If not, I can be happy to answer them. Is that all for the team of presenters? Yes? It's okay to say yes. <laughs> we can ask the questions. Yeah. All right, we do have the opportunity for public comment on this. Is there anyone here that would like to speak? All right, I'm going to close public comment. Uh, Rachel, do you want to start this one off? Sure. Um, I'm excited. I, I think. Uh, it's, 
it's wonderful to see things really now starting to build. Um, we've we've seen the plans, we've seen the roads, we've listened to, you know, speculation as to what things would look like as the construction got going, and and I think what you're proposing is a is a wonderful first building to go into that area, and it is very prominent on the um, on the corner of Innovation and Center. So because it is so prominent, of course, we're going to really take a look at it uh, because it's going to be the first thing seen yep. for a long time as people come in and look and say, well, this is great. I'm going to try and locate over here. Uh, it, sets, it sets the standard, really, for, for the development. And I think you've done a, a really good job. Um, I had, a, I of course, had a couple of questions, uh, and I think um, one of the questions that was raised by the staff was the location of the driveway, and was there going to be enough space in between where it is currently planned on being and the uh, driveway of the abutting lot? Have you? Yeah. <clears throat> so we've intentionally that? located the the driveway and the parking to the southern end of the property. Um, for a couple of reasons. One is that the building being such in a prominent location at the intersection, that putting it in the far corner and allowing the kind of the layering of plantings that we've created um, provides screening of that parking. Um, secondly, um, the, the use of the business, um, we haven't shown a connection to the adjacent property. Um, if I can speak to it clearly and, and potentially Dan will come up and provide further clarification, is that um, the standards for that was set up for if there was two abutting or adjoining properties um, in that the use for particularly for this um, client, um, you know, having a connection through that could potentially be for deliveries or increased use um, is somewhat detrimental in a way for safety for their employees and also from a, a maintenance perspective. Um, if the adjacent property has significant amount of delivery, like who's taking care of the asphalt and, you know, the continued use if it's not them that's using it. So um, we provided a dead end parking for, the, for that reason and not allowed that connectivity. Um, and that's about it. All right. Well, actually, that uh, you answered a question I didn't really ask. Um, I, I understand um, and I don't actually see the need for a connection to the abutting lot. Uh, but I, I do, you've got a driveway going in, you've got a street cut, driveway going in, and where is the potential for the driveway of the abutting property? Is there going to be adequate space? Uh, or it, would it be more appropriate for you to move your driveway a little closer to the building, to your building? A, a, you're going to be a good neighbor, and there, as you, as the first one there, you're setting what happens to the lot next to you by your choices that you make on your driveway. Right. Uh, so, uh, the question was raised about uh, the distance between the the pot your driveway and the potential driveway on the lot next to you. I understand. Okay. Yep. Um, <clears throat> You, you know, from a design standpoint, it was difficult to know like what is happening in the future, given this is it's the first, and the you know the road's not there, the curb's not there, um, and we are setting the standard. Um, I think we're following uh, the limitations um, that you know that we we have the 10-foot buffer between the properties. Um, I think from future development, if the client wants to add on to this building, um, we've left that available of the northwest side um, that allows for um, future expansion and sellability if, if they decide to do so in the future. Um, and also pr being able to provide some screening between the parking and the building um, was also essential in, in providing a usable lawn area for the employees and for the, for the business's use. So those are kind of our reasons with, for putting the curb cut um, where it's located. I certainly understand your concerns that um, the southern property could have um, curb cut in a similar scenario um, and again it's difficult to to say that you know we don't, we don't know where that is at this point if, it, if they were close if there was an existing curb cut we may push you know five or ten feet to the north 
Um, but you know, this is this would be let's say the de desired plan and, and a functional plan for for a client. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and the plantings that you have, I noticed the wildflower. Yeah. Um, and I did go and take a look and see what the mix was. Uh, and it's a very appropriate mix for, for this area. Um, I'm wondering how you're going to layer that area, that wildflower area with the, uh, is it the blueberry bushes that you have, the wild? Yeah. Are, they, is, are they just, are they gonna be there and the wildflower's gonna be around them? Are they gonna be set separately? Yeah, so they're set separately. They're set in a steel edging so that the, the, the meadow mix isn't going to um, migrate into um, the blueberry bushes. They're set in a four foot wide, um, essentially container of steel edging. Okay, but it um, will, the wildflower mix will grow up in between them, um, or? Correct, yeah, so there will okay. be these kind of striations of, of blueberry plantings, rows of blueberry plantings, and then extend out into, into the meadow, correct. Okay. So there's kind of that meshing and, and dovetailing of those two, two plants. I think that's a very imaginative way of doing it. It, sounds, it looks good to me. Thank you. And thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Rachel. Robin. Um, so trying to understand, uh, the parking space issue, um, I, I think I have two questions. The first one, um, I'm not, uh, do you happen to know if the, the three additional future parking spaces will the stormwater management plan include consideration of those three spaces? Yes. I the stormwater plan is for the entire subdivision, um, and Dan, feel free to jump in if I'm speaking incorrectly. You're um, doing fine. So anything that yep. we do on this site has already been yep. uh, thought okay. in the overall stormwater plan. And then my other point, my, I guess my other question is, and I understand that, you know, you've talked with staff about, you know, your land use and what's happening here. I'm just trying to understand sort of um, logistically how the business works um, because there's no, it, it says in the, um, in the cover letter that um, it's a privately owned company that produces education materials to assist physical therapy. So is there production happening or is it just sort of um, uh, sort of intellectual property that's happening and then the production of the uh, things that go in the warehouse are being done somewhere else? Would you like to speak to the logistics of the business, yeah. just to give them a summary of what? Yeah, I, I'm just trying to understand why you only have like three to six employees, but yeah. there's all this producing going on. <laughs> I love it. I want to do what you're doing. Uh, hi, thanks. Uh, my name is Scott Giles, and this is uh, my wife, Tracy, and okay. we're uh, residents of Scarborough as Great. well, so we're thrilled to have the potential to uh, be part of the Downs and close to uh, you know, where our kids have grown up and everything else. But We've had this business for going on almost 30 years now, and um, we, we basically have written, produced books, apps, um, web-based products. We go out and teach 260 or 72-day courses around the country. Okay. With independent for, contractors, not the two of us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah oh. get a problem. Um, for physical therapists and physical therapist assistants. Um, and, and again, we've been doing this for a long time. So what we do is, is we, our internal team creates products. We do have a number of employees that are uh, consultants, hired folks that are outside of this region. Many of our uh, 37, 38 course instructors contribute in some ways to the writing. So we, we do all the, uh, the design, the, the graphics, the layout. Um, we work with a company out of Buffalo that does all the web-based stuff. So all the creative comes through our place, but we've done all the fulfillment ourselves. So in other words, we get the, for instance, uh, you know, we'll get books typically at 7,000 at a time or so. Okay. We'll, that's why it's so, that's why our deliveries are so infrequent. We just okay. have to have such big runs because the unit costs are so great if we mm -hmm. go with smaller runs. And then so we have mail, so we do, our, instead of dealing with a fulfillment house, we do mail fulfillment uh, through our, through our business. So, okay. so we're not, we don't have presses or, mm -hmm. you okay. know, we, we don't have yeah, things like that. We deal with, we deal, yep. we deal with McCarthy in, uh, yep. up in Augusta. We deal with Sheridan, Donnelly, some of the big distributors. And we take the books, we take delivery of the books, we create them, and then they are shipped from our facility. So we have UPS and postal pickup each day. So it's truly a large percentage of the, of the, um, of the f square footage is warehouse. So uh, it's about 1,800 okay. of the 
okay. 17 or 1800 feet of the okay and the thousand. rest is off of space kind correct. of correct thank you folks. yeah and that's okay. why we, honestly that's why we kind of love the thought of the downs because we found a lot of warehouse space when we were looking for places we found a lot of creative space but there was honestly there was not a lot of creative space that had the warehouse capability and so that was honestly what made it such a <laughs> well you a just did a great commercial for the downs <laughs> <and> for <laughs> other people to, coming to scarborough <laughs> of your caliber so thank you for being thank you for sure. answering the question yeah, we're, we're so well other creative folks like us come to the downs right? absolutely I mean, absolutely so cool. thank great you. thank you thank thank you um wow i'm I'm starstruck now. I don't know where I left off. <laughs> That's great stuff. Um, yeah, I think, I think uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, I myself have to put my arms around this because it is something new that's happening kind of a thing. Um, but in general, I think we've all got a little work to do. Like, we've got to do our, our homework to remember what the, the uh, performance standards are that apply there. But also, you all do, do too. I think, you know, putting the... Um, you know the the nuts and bolts part of the site plan together is is still forming but um you're doing a great job with you know your creativity and i think it's really great that we're having an architect and a landscape architect in front of us type of thing instead of just the plain old civil engineering no no offense meant to any civil engineers but it's really nice to have a different process happening this way so thank you all and good luck. Thanks, Thanks Robin. Okay. Um, first, congratulations. Um, I, I think this is a terrific um, first project to go in there. It really set the standard. I think the architecture looks great, and I, I like the landscaping as well. Um, I guess, um, just to clarify, maybe this would be a question for Dan more than you folks on that driveway. Um, would that, the location of this driveway, do you see this is a, um, Dan, this, this is a, a potential problem for the other lots <coughs> along Center Street? Um, I, don't, I don't see it as a potential problem. I think that what's going to happen is lots are going to kind of repeat themselves in terms of the pattern um, mm -hmm. because per the design guidelines, buildings aren't to be set way back from the street there can be some parking in front or they can be set up i think this is a great first corner lot set up right at the corner um, so driveways are going to be on either side of um, the lot so if you look across the street there's a lot there and this this driveway could line up nicely with um, the lot across the way where the building could be up at the other corner potentially um, and then to the south, um, what could happen is the building would be closer to this driveway and the, the driveway to that site could be below the building. So um, I'd expect that you'd see a lot of plans like this where lots have to respond accordingly and then offset or in some cases um, where, where necessary shared driveway. And um, if I'm not mistaken, on the other side of uh, Innovation Way, that's gonna be a private road between that lot and the next one correct that's a that's a shared driveway that actually serves uh, up to six lots yeah i'm talking about over this side oh won't there be won't there be a um well, isn't it isn't there in the plans a pri like a shared or a private road there is right the, the fourth leg no, of that intersection right over here yeah right there oh okay I believe so. Won't, I'm the, not won't that go sure. up to Innovation Way, though? I have a there you go. Yeah. So I think maybe. Oh, okay, okay. It's over. Oh, it's over. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, that, that's all I have. I'm just. I'm just. I, I think it's a great. You got a great plan there. Thank you. Yeah. I'm all done. <laughs> Did you need me to say yeah. that? <laughs> Jen? <laughs> uh, I don't have too much else to add um, other than what's already been covered. Um, as a civil engineer, I'll echo the kudos um, to this design team and um, to you as owners for seeking them out, um, sort of in general, but also uh, in context of 
the larger sense in developing out this project. I think um, I certainly appreciate a very creative approach to this, what could otherwise be a very vanilla single story um, office building, you know, built out to meet all the requirements to the T, but um, like putting blueberry bushes near probably where your employees will have lunch, I just think is really cool. <laughs> um, so that's, that's great. Um, and, you know, um, any other detailed comments that I would have uh, have really been captured well by our staff, so I would just look for um, those to be addressed in the next round. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Rick? I don't know if my colleagues picked up on this, but when you come down the road and look at that from the entrance, it's going to be really bright. Uh, you have those recessed lights underneath the where the entryway is, and then on the other side at 9.9 .9 candle watts and 6.2 one out. I think it's smart to go out on that one side because you're going to use that as kind of like a patio or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think that's smart. It's going to be pretty bright, so I would make sure that you have some dimming controls on those because you may want to play around with that. I don't know what the glare might be as you're coming in and having that lit up like that. Just a thought. Yeah. Um, and the other final thought I have is on the roof, while it's flat, it makes a good carrier for some solar panels and maybe some thought to not, don't have to put them on right now, but at least put a chase inside. Um, the renewable laws are changing here in Maine and it might be an opportunity to do some pre, you know, put a, a cable with a string in it or uh, a pipe with a string in it for later on. Um, and on that note, if you put a rooftop unit on top of that for your makeup there, it, and I don't know if it's part of the design standards for the downs, if those have to be hidden from view, but I would think that we might want to consider uh, rooftop units to be somewhat decorative with a fence or something like that so that it doesn't really uh, catch the eye. So, yeah. Thanks, Rick. Uh, so I'll just kind of jump on a little bit and just say I think it's a great looking building. Um, you know, the, the fun part of being the first one in is you get the blank slate. I can understand staff's concern about position of the driveway. Um, you know, looking at this, though, where you abut on the other side is somebody that's going to have what appears to be some private road frontage. Not sure interconnectivity is appropriate in this spot, although I think, um, as staff has noted, you want to encourage it, especially in um, kind of an area this consolidated. Um, but, I, you know, I see where you're clientele definitely kind of wants their own little slice of heaven on that corner and I can respect that so um, outside of that I think I look forward to seeing this move move ahead um, it is exciting to see this phase start to come alive and I, and I think Rachel hit it on the head where you know you're gonna be the first in so I don't I don't would say we're gonna be harder on you I think we're just we should be very careful you know um, <laughs> because you, you are you really do set the tone for yeah. um, you know, what that street's gonna look like, what the visual representation will be. You know, you're kind of, you know, are people gonna start copying your design elements and things that, you know, we've gotta be thinking about. Um, the driveway alignment, you know, if it went five feet north, you know, yay. You know, I, but I don't know how much room you have to play with there. It's, it's one of those locations. If it does line up with the, I think you are dictating, um, yeah. maybe this, the lot across the street from you and maybe the lot south of you. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't necessarily think a cascading pattern in this function um, would necessarily be bad for what you're looking at there. So uh, some of the benefits of being first in is you get to kind of pick your spot. <laughs> so, good luck to you. Thank you. Hey, Thank you. Look forward to seeing you again. Great. Thank you. With that, we have ended the business portion of this agenda, and we are on to a staff report. Thank you. So I have a few updates. Um, we have had two pre-construction meetings since the last meeting in July. Uh, if you guys can remember, in 2018, you approved a minor parking expansion at the existing Piper Shores campus for 12 or 14 spaces. They're moving forward with that. And we did have the pre-construction meeting for the nitrogen tank at Blue Ocean Seafood over at uh, Snow Canning Road. And then a few other updates. Uh, the comp plan, it's still around. Um, 
where uh, staff provided uh, an array of comments uh, to the draft that you guys had a chance to look at. Um, we're waiting on those um, suggestions being incorporated into the final copy of the draft, and those will be in within the next few weeks, so stay tuned on that. And then I'm sure you've noticed that Gorham Road has been reconstructed, probably. So um, that project is just about finished. Uh, it's in the final phases. Uh, they're about to put the finished paving, striping, um, and landscaping in in the next few weeks. So it's definitely a good addition to this part of town, I think. So I think thanks for bearing with us. It's been a long project. That's all I have. Thanks, Jamel. Uh, administrative amendment report. Uh, not at this time. All right. Correspondence? None. Uh, planning board comments. Yes, Robin. I, I would just like to again say that um, I think our new format is really, really effective in getting so many projects reviewed in a timely manner. So I thank you, Mr. Chair. But also, I, I'd like to really thank the staff um, with the quality of applicants and the packages that are coming in front of us have, has, has really improved as well by having people really focus on what needs to be done. So I just wanted to thank everyone for making our time here as efficient and as effective as possible. Thanks, Robin. Any other planning board comments? I did notice that the uh, prefab classrooms have been delivered to the uh, five point school, I think it is. Eight corners. Eight corners. Eight corners. <laughs> five points. Five points. <laughs> or Biddeford. Eight corners. So they've yeah. <laughs> so they made the parking lot there. All right. Um, adjournment. Motion to adjourn. S second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor. All right. Thanks, guys. That was a great meeting. Yeah. So nice job. Well done. Yeah. Thank you.